off the blocks, you get a you get a backstroke start. Backstroke start, yep. So also different grips you can have on the block. You can have hands side by side. You can have hands that run parallel to each other. Uh, so different grips. Again, to each their own. There's no right way of doing it. Yeah. Whatever, Whatever works feels for you. best. And it'll be really interesting to see who pushes these underwaters in this 200 backstroke. Not wanting to push past 15 like we saw on the first day. The 50 meter action. Yeah. Unfortunately, there was a disqualification in the final in lane four. Going they past 15 meters, what past. that is. Yeah, so you can see, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up right now, but you'll see when it moves that there is a there is a lane line or a rope going across the pool at 15 meters. That's for a false start, but also gives the judges a gauge to see whether or not you're going past that second red marker on the that lane line. That is right. Just doing some last touches on the backstroke wedges here, but I think we're almost ready to get going. There will be five heats of this women's event. Two hundred backstroke is a very difficult event. It's very taxing in the legs. That's what I was about to say. This is the one where you want to make sure you have a great race plan because the legs will be the one thing that hurt, but that they also will be the one thing that's going to get you through this race. That is right. Those legs don't give out as fast. I actually used to swim quite a bit of backstroke. Oh, yeah. Before uh, before fully becoming a breaststroker. Wow. It was my backstroke as well, and this 200, man, it would suck. But, you it know, would. After, afterwards, just looking, you're crushing those best times because, like you said, it's relatively easy to train just to focus on those legs. Making sure you know what to do when you're tired and engaging the right body parts. Pulling with your lats. That's right. Rolling on your side. Making sure that thumb's popping out first to the water, but then go entering first is going to be that pinky. Yeah, making sure you're being as efficient as possible here because that's that's what this 200 backstroke, it's get, it really comes down to who's being more efficient. Yeah, the junior's cut for this for women's is 222.97, and the senior's cut for trials is 219.60. Both very fast times. But those are those very times fast times. Those thrown down here, Hayden. Just doing a test start here to make sure the uh, officials are ready to get going. Here we go. First of five heats, Madam Referee. And they are off, heat one of women's 200 meter backstroke. In lane three from Halifax Trojans, Maya Rasic. In lane four from St. John's Legends is Kiara Higdon. And in lane five from St. John's Legends is Harlow LeBlanc. So Hayden, in no time here in lane three, Maya Rasic looking to just, just go at best time. I mean, that's all she can do here. Punch yeah. a fast time for tonight. Hopefully getting into the final, but if not in the final, maybe in that best of the rest heat as we saw. Yeah, wow. Love those heats. Love those heats. We saw some very fast times. We did. And, you know, the opportunity to swim, a s to get a second swim is something, but to, to get a second swim in the best of the rest. Oh, yeah. That's a great feeling, being able to squeak in for that second chance and at a provincial meet, championship meet here, yeah. long course even. Having a second chance at long course swims when all, all the swimming standards are actually in long course. And this year, Swimming Canada made an exception to give trials a, s a short course time as well, simply because not as many clubs had access to long course pools during the yeah. whole COVID outbreak. So here we go. This is probably one of the, like we said earlier in the, d earlier in the day yesterday, this is probably one of the first long course meets in a very long time held in Nova Scotia. So it's going to be very exciting. It, it has been very exciting to see how fast these kids can go. But here we go. Maya from the Halifax Trojans coming into the wall first, halfway, yep. looking very strong and controlled. Having about half a body length on Harlow LeBlanc at the, f at the hunt 100 meter mark. They're doing really well, and we can see that the underwaters are slowly shortening up, but they do. You, know, you can only imagine the pain they're feeling in their legs right now. 
once once you get tired and once once that heart starts beating real fast, it's really hard to hold that underwater. That's when you know, yeah, you're gonna see the chin start to glue to the chest, but when that happens, you're gonna start dropping your hips and it's gonna become even harder to swim. So the best case scenario, what you wanna be doing right here is tilting your head all the way back, trying to force those hips up to the surface of the water to get that, to get your feet kicking so you can see that white water. That is right, and you know, that is what those girls are doing. They are having a great race here. Hoping to, hoping to punch a long course time, you know. Lots of these girls have short course conversion times just because they haven't been able to swim long course in this last two years, so their times have not counted. Yeah, and that's it. So to build off that, Hayden, for swimming Canada, your time actually does expire after two years. It does. So so if you have a time standard that you get in this meet, it'll be valid for the next two years, but after that, you're going to have to re-swim that time or better in order to renew that, renew that cut. That is right. But here, Maya is picking up the pace. Enter it in no time, so it's going to be amazing to see how fast she goes. Yeah, and you can slowly see the, the stroke rate of Harlow in lane 5 picking up. Maybe has Maya in her sight, but she's looking to better her time of 3.040 as well, which is a short course time. And they're going to do just that. Maya coming into the wall really quick here. Touching the wall just under two, three minutes there with a 2.59.03, followed by Harlow, Harlow in lane, in lane five. 5 with a three minutes point oh one then closing Kiara with a three minutes point oh five so all best times there great swimming from them on to heat two of five Hayden right here showing at 935 so we're about a minute behind right here but you could think with the whole walking back from the other side of the bulkhead for the 50 free making sure the wedges are all in properly this is what it takes sometimes you do have to run a little bit behind in order for yeah. me to me to progress but here we go Second heat of five. off in lane one from St. John's Legend, Sophia Vavasour, in lane two from Shearwater Bluefins, Mary Ellen Holland, in lane three from St. John's Legends, Kaylee Simmons, in lane four from Trojans, Edda McClellan, in lane six from Halifax Trojans, Marnie Bishop, in lane seven from St. John's Legends is Vera Eddy, and also from St. John's in lane eight is Ariana Higdon. This second heat has already increased the pace. Yep, you can see those arms spinning. They want to get those best times. They want to punch their ticket for later tonight. They do, and that's really what the prelims is all about, punching a ticket for tonight. Because you really do want to get that second swim. Yeah, and you know, in the morning, these doubles, as you were saying before, how important recovery is. I'm not quite sure what these younger athletes are doing, but I'm sure hoping that their coaches and even older athletes on the team are leading them by example and telling them that, hey, you know, don't stay up till 2 a.m. in that hotel room. Yeah. Make sure you're going to bed early, getting that extra bit of rest, making sure you're flushing out your legs of all that lactic acid that you're building up during the day, and then you're hydrating right now. Like those Halifax Trojans in the corner, they're putting their legs up, getting ready for this 200 backstroke. Yep. Flushing out that lactic acid, but here in like, lane three, Kaylee from the St. John's Legend, followed by Lane 4's Etta. And yeah. Lane 6's Marnie, Marnie from the Halifax Trojan Club. All fighting for a good time here. And that is what they are doing. Doing a phenomenal job. They're doing really well. And again, like we said, like we always say, you can't tell a race until it's old, until it's over, excuse me, until times are official on the board. But right now, all fighting for first is lanes 3, 4, and 6. Doing a great job, Kaylee from St. John's Legends, lane 4, Edda from Halifax Trojans, and Marnie as well, her teammate, all doing a great job. But again, this is the young heat of girls, and they're throwing down some crazy big swims right now, Hayden. This is, and a long course 200 backstroke, not as many walls, obviously, because we're in long course season here. So you don't get to push those underwaters as much. So when you get the chance to push off that wall, you really are trying to get those underwaters fast. Oh, absolutely, Hayden. And you know that it doesn't come easy, especially when you're focusing on these little details. You really want to make sure that you're executing everything to a T, that you're staying close to the race plan, but you can divert just a little bit. But right now we're seeing in lane four, Adam McClellan of Halifax Trojans picking up the speed, trying to separate from the pack to solidify her, her heat win. 
But lane six, Marnie Bishop isn't going down she to the fight. She is responding. Yeah, wow. This is a quite a finish for this second heat of the women's Coming down to the touch, stroke. I don't know who will have it. Looks like lane four. Lane six, it wow. looks, has it. With a, sorry, Marnie. Yeah, Marnie from lane six at a 251.60, followed by her teammate, Etta, at a 251.86. So those are some great times. Like we said earlier, those short course conversion times, that's right on conversion. That's great, yeah. There is a swim conversion time online provided by Swim Swam. I mean, that only gives a general idea because that not does. everyone is better at short course than they are at long course. That's true. And but this right here, we're seeing that these time conversions are going to be quite fast, Hayden. They are. Here we are, Hayden. Heat 3 of 5. Madam Referee. And they're off. In lane one from St. John's Legends, Bridget Dunn. In lane two from Halifax Wavecutters, Emmy Wang. In lane three from Crusaders, Rosalind Tate. In lane four from Trojans, Isabel Melanson. In lane five from Trojans as well, Ella Brocklehurst. In lane six from SWAT, Aileen Potvang. In lane 7 from St. John's Legends, Claire French. And in lane 8 from Halifax Trojans is Avery Stade. Just looking at the standards here, Isabel will be hunting down that CJC time of 229.97. Yeah, that's a great time. 222, sorry, my, I beg my pardon. So three seconds off right here, you know, I don't know how old that time is, but right now we've seen some great time. So if not this morning, I'm thinking maybe tonight, Hayden. Maybe. And wouldn't that be something last night seeing Juliet Mercer of, of Sackville Waves and Ella Collins both qualifying for their trials? Yeah, those were, those were some phenomenal swimming, phenomenal swims last night. But in the water here, Isabel taking this, taking this out strong. Strong, and she looks very controlled there in the water. Followed by Ella Brockhurst from the Halifax Trojans. And in lane seven, Claire French from the St. John's Legend. And Isabel flipping at 110.85, so can she come home in a 112? Yeah, followed closely in lane 5 by Ella Brocklehurst in lane 7, Claire French. Still anyone's race hidden for 1-2-3. It is. And excuse me before, it's Juliette Mercier from the Sackville Waves qualifying in that 200-meter breaststroke last night, out-touching Ella Collins of Halifax Trojans. What a race that was. This 200 backstroke tonight will be a great should, swim. It will be great. great. Swim. We're seeing some real fast swimming this morning. Seeing everyone, it looks a little more calm on deck this morning during the prelim session. People conserving their energy. You don't see everyone up on their legs. That is right. Cheering on. So you think, like right now, you're marking about the halfway point for the swim meet. So you're going to be a little tired. You're going to be a little run down. But it's important to dig deep and really conserve all that energy. Because, like we said before, a swim meet's a marathon. You want to take it easy and get excited for every session. That's true. But here, Lane four. Isabel, she, she's pumping her arms now, cutting away at that best time of 225.87. So we're going to see if she can maybe get a best time here. Claire lane seven trying to put a move on lane five. Ella Brocklehurst of Halifax Trojan. She does just that, overtaking. Yeah, with five meters to go. It looks like Ella has a slight, or sorry, excuse me, Claire in lane seven will outtouch Ella for second place of the heat. Isabel coming home in a 226.90, so just over that best time, but you know, that is a fantastic prelim swim from those ladies. Yeah, looking really good. Touching in fourth right here is lane one, Reese Gates of St. John's Legends, followed closely in lane three by Eliza, Eliza, excuse me. Oh, sorry, Rosalind Tate in lane three. And in lane two, Emmy Wang of Halifax Wavecutters coming in for the heat. This is the fourth heat going to be jumping in the water right now. Fourth out of five, so things things are picking up pace. We're going to see some fast swimming. As you can see, a Dalhousie member, Katie Berwick, in lane four. Swimming backstroke, I do know that she often does train backstroke in practice. She does. So this is her wheelhouse. Last night she had the, yesterday she had the 200 free, excuse me, and I think she's ready for the 200 backstroke. I, I hope so. 
But here we go. It's going to be an exciting 200 backstroke. And they're off. In lane one from St. John's Legends, Reese Gates. In lane two from Churro Centurions, Ava Nettleton. In lane three from Wolfville, Eliza Stokesbury Price. In lane four from Dalhousie, Katie Berwick. In lane five from Trojans, Charlotte Evans. In lane six from Wolfville, Wolfville, excuse me, Shannon Guy. In lane seven from St. John's Legends, Eliza, Elizabeth McKay. And in lane eight from Legends as well as Kennedy Sears. You saw there. Katie Burrick pushing her underwater almost to the 15 meter mark. Yep, so she's looking. She definitely has the most experience in this heat with a 200 meter backstroke. She does. So she's going to probably be looking to set the tone for herself and have someone challenge her so she can be pushing that 225 mark with her entry time. 225.74. But here they come emerging from that wall. Katie Berwick and Charlotte, Charlotte Evans. Evans from the Halifax Trojans. Both pushing the pace in the middle of the pool here, followed by a close St. John's Legends group. Elizabeth McKay in lane seven, and Kennedy Sears in lane eight. They're giving Katie and Charlotte a run for their money. They are, don't count those lane seven and eight out. But Katie Burke is flipping at a 113.64, followed by Charlotte at a 114. And in third is lane seven's Elizabeth from the St. John's Legend at a 117.2. So this, she, you can see right there, Elizabeth is picking up her arm tempo. Yeah, looks like she's gonna try to make a move on Katie, moving closer to the lane line, maybe trying to catch a little bit of that draft that we were talking about. Yeah, you know, in backstroke, some some may think there's not as much of a draft, but it's probably the second most draftable stroke that in swimming, followed by freestyle. So. Yeah, you know, I do like what I'm seeing this morning with these swims. It looks a little conservative, so maybe the race final differed just a little bit tonight. Maybe. But it has been looking good all around the field so far, so you can only imagine what these ladies are going to be doing in between sessions to prepare for tonight. So now we're going to be able to see, can Katie Berwick hold off Charlotte Evans of Halifax Trojans to keep her one seat in this heat? In the circle seated heats, actually, Hayden. Yeah. You know, circle seating is not my favorite thing. No, because you will spread. Instead of having all the fastest people in the last heat, they get spread out with all the heats, always getting that best lane in lane four in an eight-lane pool. Katie Burrow with five meters to go. Looks like she will hold off Charlotte Evans for the first place in the heat. Touching the wall at 233.24. Katie Burrow followed by Charlotte in lane five at a 234.12. Oh, it came right down to the touch, but it was lane threes. Eliza. From... Eliza from Wolfville. Touching the wall at 239.81. Followed closely by St. John's... By the St. John's Legends Elizabeth at a 240. That was a fast heat. That was a fast heat. Katie adding about 8 seconds is all right. You often see that. She probably knows that she'll be able to get a double swim with that time. She will. And... That's really what she's hoping for. I'm looking. She's probably saving a little bit in the tank, being a little methodical with this. She does yep. have experience, so she knows that she'll be able to squeak in there and unleash the beast tonight in finals. That's true, and that's what it's all about. This is the final heat of the women's 200 backstroke. And they are off. In lane two from Bluefins, Emma Power. In lane three from Sackville Waves, Alana Mercier. In lane three from Halifax Trojans, Sophie Rooney. In lane five from Trojans, Aaliyah Bloom. In lane six from Crusaders, Sophia Dean. In lane seven from St. John's Legends, Abby Andrews. And also from St. John's Legends in lane eight, Jada Roberts. So Sophia Rooney in the lane fourth from the Halifax Trojans. She definitely does have the fastest seed time here this I've morning. heard that she is the backstroker. She is the one to keep your eyes on in this heat. Throwing down crazy swims at their previous meets before Christmas. Sophie Rooney is looking to better her time of 221.96. So far, she she ha, she is out the fastest. That's the fastest first 50 we have seen this morning at a 33.1. 221.96. That gets her under that junior trials cut that we were talking about before. 222.97. Now chasing that seniors cut of 219.60. We'll see if that she can do just that. That 220 mark. 
That's quite the barrier. Yeah, it really is. Getting un sub-220 in the 200 back is definitely a big accomplishment and nothing that is. to push aside. Sophie Rooney looking very strong at the turn at the 100 meter mark in lane four, followed closely by uh, Aaliyah Bloom and Sophia Dean in lanes five and six. It is it is stroke for stroke right but now. Don't in lane forget four, about six, Abby seven. Andrews in lane seven, St. John's Legends. They do have a very strong backstroke group, it seems, Hayden. And they, they do. have been having some great depth in all the strokes. That mid distance group from the St. John's Legends, they have they've had they had numbers yesterday. In those great scoring, big events. team points. Not knowing what they, what they have in store these next couple of days, they're swimming every race as though it's their last race. That That's is what true. I love to see from a club. Looking at the board here, it is still lane four. Sophie Rooney from the Halifax Trojans Club going a 145.28 at the opposite end of the pool, followed by lane five, then six, and closely following seven. So it's going to be it's going to be real close here. Sophie rooting, seeing how fast she can go in the morning. Maybe she's saving a little bit for tonight. Yep, you never know. Similar to Katie Burke from Dalhousie, as we saw in the previous heat. Sophie Rooney picking up the speed with 10 meters to go. About six meters out, she looks to be grabbing this gold. First seed going into tonight's finals. Followed closely in lane five by Aaliyah Bloom of Halifax Trojans. Wow, she definitely picked up her pace in that last 15 and meters. Going in for third, lane six and seven. Sophia Dean of Crusaders and Abby Andrews of St. John's. Who got it, Hayden? That was a that was Lane Sevens Abby from St. John's touching, wow, one one hundredth of ahead second. of Lane Six Sophia Dean. Great swims from the field. You wonder maybe Lane Fives Aaliyah maybe she maybe she waited too long to make her move. Sophie Rooney going 2:22. That that was the fast that was the fastest time this morning. Yep, that was a great swim. So she will be going into that that open heat, that open age group in first. But moving on to the men's 200 meter backstroke. And they're off. First heat of the men's 200 meter backstroke, Caden. Only three in this heat. Jim Ja in lane three from St. John's Legends. From Cape Breton, we have Thomas Guy in lane four. And in lane five, from SBSC, from Shearwater, Blue, Shearwater Bluefins, Gabriel Vidkin. So some no times here. You know, Jim in lane three, he, he looked very strong in that first underwater. Sometimes those are the scariest swimmers because you have no idea what to expect. That is true. You know, Coming from first year of university here, yeah. there were a couple of meets where I was entered a, I was entered next to a no time person and I got out touched. Oh yeah, you know that. And that's when you know you're like you never know what to expect. You want to go that's out true. smooth. Maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, they can't keep up with the group, but then you know you got hop in the water. And similar to Jim right here, he's taking it out hot, he's bringing the heat. He's he is. not letting that no time bring him down. He is trying not. to make a statement in the first heat, set the tone for the twenty meter backstroke. Showing that at 14 years old, he will be able to go at a very fast time, leading the pack by about five meters, looking very strong in the water, Hayden. He is, and you know, he's probably going to be chasing down that Eastern's time of 222.79 for 14 years of age. You know, that's a very fast time. That would be doing just what Sophie Rooney swam before, and Sophie Rooney having a great swim. But let's see if Jim Joe will be able to do this either this morning, and if not... Maybe tonight. Maybe tonight. And you know, if you can't get that down tonight... That's a goal for him later on. Yeah, that's one of those long-term goals you're going to set with your coach, write it on a piece of paper, look at it every morning type thing. That Put is it on right. your fridge, you're waking up, but boom, that 222 is in your mind, working towards that bigger goal. And for swimmers too, setting those goals are so such a big big. It is. I mean, you set one big goal, and then you get little small goals. It's going to make little you feel baby a lot steps better. to yep. get, get that one big goal that you really, that you really want. Set yourself a, a time limit where you can get some stuff. Other ones, small little things. Maybe working three kicks off the wall. You're not breathing on that yeah. first stroke. That's an attainable That's right. goal. It's all the little things. Or focusing on your on your flexibility. That is a huge part of swimming that goes unnoticed. I know. I definitely need to work in that this off season. 
That's right, but Jim Jaw from the St. John's Legend. Having a great prelim swim, and I am excited to see what this man can do tonight. Yeah. Get him in with a heat full of swimmers that... That are similar in time. Yeah. And they're going to be pushing each other to their limits, seeing who can push that threshold of pain. But Jim Jaw, lane Touching three. Touching the wall at 234.61, so that is a great time from him. Phenomenal time. Following closely in lane four, Thomas Guy from Cape Breton Dorados. Touching the wall at a... That was a little bit of a soft touch. Not sure if that time is going to be a little bit faster, but he touched the wall at 250.22. No flash photography. Please make sure your flashes are turned off your camera if you are Bringing it home in lane five. Gabriel touching the wall at 303, 31. So those are still improvements of those short, short course, course conver conversion times. Conversion yep. times. And like we said, usually the conversion from short course to long course, it is a bit slower, and that is all right. You know, definitely coming from experience, my short course times are de significantly faster than my long course times. Oh, absolutely. And you know, that's probably due to the fact that your underwaters are so strong. That so is true. You get a lot of wall. you get a lot more walls, but here we go. Heat two, Madam Referee. In lane one from Crusaders, Luca Ellis. In lane two from Sackville Waves, Eugene Leggy. In lane three from Sackville as well, Zachary Marquez. In lane four, Stephen Miley from CBSC. In lane five, Alex Bouchard of Halifax Trojans. In lane six from Crusaders, Leon Bautista. In lane seven from Halifax Trojans, Chris Nguyen. So Hayden, again, here, not a full heat, but that's totally fine. Looks to, looks to me as though lane four, taking it out strong, Stephen Miley. Stephen Milley, excuse me. Again, if I'm butchering this, please. If you're here in person, if you come to watch in person, come let me know that I'm mispronouncing one name wrong, and we will do our best to pronounce all these names as they should be pronounced. We will. Steven, having that little bit more experience, as he is 18 years of age, so he's being challenged by Alexander Bouchard in lane five. Can they both push each other to go super fast times? I think that's what we're going to be seeing here to this morning. Alex Bouchard, definitely a backstroker. We saw him last night throw down a monstrous 400 meter IM. Let's see if he's gonna be able to hold on tonight for this 200 meter backstroke. Flipping almost simultaneously, but Steven just having the edge on Alex, going out a 110.70. Wow, Alex is underwater there. Did you see that? Yeah, that was a great underwater. Pushing it to nine meters, Alex Bouchard definitely attacking this third 50 like it's no one's business. Um, definitely part of the race plan that his coach Mark from Trojans gave him. Looking very strong. Let's see if he's going to be able to hold on for this last 50, Hayden. You know, that's definitely what you want to do in this a 200 of any stroke. Push yep. that third 50 because that's where everyone's going to be hurting the most. Yep. So who can push through that? Who can gain a little momentum, gain a little speed and confidence in that third 50 will really push you, give you some momentum for that last one. You know, something that always pushed me was my, my first ever coach told me that everyone's hurting the same. So it's who can, who can fight through the hurt that little bit more so yeah and we see Alex Bouchard doing just that even flipping now pulling away from the pack in lane five Alex Bouchard putting together a great 200 meter backstroke this morning he I'm is. looking forward to seeing what he can do tonight Hayden yeah he, he is only 14 years of age so he will not be in the same heat as Steven tonight no he will but not hopefully be. pushing that time even even faster than what he's doing right now 200 meter backstroke pushing that national or that provincial record of 216 97 Touching the wall at a 222.92. That is just shy of the CJC time, but he definitely has. He's just what? grazed over the Eastern's time. So he will be hunting that time tonight. Yeah, Eastern's cut of 222.79 for the 14 year old boys. Alex Bouchard definitely has that one in mind for tonight. He does. Great swims all around. Looking at the board, he seems to be pleased. I think he definitely knows what he can improve yeah. on tonight. Yeah, that's always a, that's always a good feeling when you're just, just, just shy of that mark. Again, someone coming down to that hundredth of a second you said before. Yeah. Out touching people by point oh one. Definitely hurts when you're on the wrong side of it. But gosh, once you get that out touch. Yeah. It feels great. It does. It's out touching the out touching the clock really. Yeah. But here we go. Lane th heat three of four.
and they are off. In lane two, from Sackville Waves, Ben Levitt. In lane three, from Halifax Trojans, Jonathan Earl. In lane four, from Trojans as well, Owen Nicholson. In lane five, from CBSC, Liam McArthur. And in lane six, from Halifax Trojans, John Cloet. And in lane seven, from Trojans as well, Dmitry Popkov. You know, it's an interesting strategy when a swimmer does not wear a race suit in the prelim session. You you think they must be pretty confident going into this, Oftentimes onto that race. you'll see that in older swimmers, if you're not shaved and tapering for a meet, just wearing your Speedo or your practice suit in that prelims right. and suiting up at night, just so you can get that sense. That's right. Sense of final, sense of urgency that you won't need to go fast. So, feels great. I don't know if all clubs and teams have been shaved for this meet. I, I would assume so because this is this is a provincial meet. This is the championship. provincial championship meet of Nova Scotia. So, 2022 David Fry meet. Thank you for joining us here today, folks, for the Saturday morning prelims of day three. In the water in lane four is Owen Nicholson from the Halifax Trojans Club taking this one out fast with a 10907. So that is the first. That is the Sub fastest. That is the fastest hundred first hundred of a 200 we have seen this morning. The rest of the pack is relatively close, relatively bunched up. Yeah, Owen definitely trying to pull away from the pack. His chin getting a little stuck to his chest. I'm worried that his hips are going to be dropping a little bit, but he seems to be cool, calm, controlled, knowing what he's doing, and I'm not worried whatsoever for him now. That's where that race suit helps that much more, you know, lifting those hips, helping you with some buoyancy there. Yeah, really compressing everything. You don't want to be in your race suit for too, too long and making sure that you're doing the most take care of that race suit race or uh, rinsing it out after with cold water to get out of the chlorine pool to take all those chlorine out because that eats away at the material that does that'll compromise the lifespan as well it will that's for sure but emerging from the wall is owen with a very very comfortable lead here coming into the final 20 meters owen nicholson seems to know that he'll be swimming again tonight with this time that is right trying to better his time of 217.27 which is already a very solid time, Hayden. Past that, that sub-220 mark, as you said before. And, you know, I Will think he do it? tonight he is just – he's going to be going real fast tonight. But he, Owen touched the wall at a 222.12. So that is a great swim with a, without a race suit on. Yeah, very impressed. Followed Close by lane well. seven, Jack from the St. John's legend. Lane and seven Dimi being Dmitry Popkov. That is right. Followed by lane fives, Liam MacArthur from. Liam MacArthur being from Cornerbrook. Those are some great times put up by these swimmers. Moving on to the last heat here. Fastest seat time is Cole Mitchell from the Dalhousie Swim Club. Yeah, Cole having some great experience. I know being a teammate, being a freshman alongside Cole this year, he trained at Ontario Swim Academy. He definitely has some background in backstroke, knowing what to do with some very tough sets. He's been throwing some eight kilometer backstroke sets and has known how to deal with those. He has been. Very menacing jump into the water there by Cole. That, that's usually what you tend to see by the top swimmer in backstroke race. Yeah. In lane one from Shearwater, Eric Schillinger. In lane two from Bluefins, James Traverse. In lane three from Pictou County Mariners, Ian Stewart. In lane four from Dalhousie, Cole Mitchell. In lane five from Halifax Trojans, Cameron Harding. In lane six also from Trojans, Ryan Hull. In lane seven from St. John's Legends, Jack Davis. And also from St. John's in lane eight, Henry Pearson. Cole Mitchell really pushing that 15 meter mark there, Hayden. He was, he was, he was cutting that real close. He there. had me worried. I really hope he made it. I do think so. I do think his head popped up right before that red, the, red marker. those red markers. But he That's does right. practice that at practice quite a bit. On going the daily. Going hand in hand with coach, making sure that he's not going past that 15 meter mark because That's right. in the end, really using your underwaters to your advantage will help you. Like we said earlier, it is a 50 meter pool here, so you do get your your walls get cut in half. Cameron Harding have a very, having a very high stroke rate compared to Cole, but Cole's still holding on to that first place right now. Trying to go out sub 110. Let's see if he'll do just that. Maybe even 105. I don't know. It's going to be me. right around there. Cole Mitchell going out 1075, followed by Cameron going out 10946. So those are both the top hundreds we've seen in this 200 backstroke. But as you can see, Cole pushing that third 50. Yeah, you can tell increasing. he's really pushing. His arms spin a little faster, kicking a little harder, but you can see everyone in the field doing just that. So similar race that is plans right. all around. 
Cameron responding to Cole's push, matching his stroke rate. So trying to hold on. It's going to be interesting to see. And if I'm Cameron, I'm happy I have Cole in my heat because that is Cole right. have an experience. He's going to know what to push, and Cameron's going to hold on, and he's doing that is just right. that here, Hayden. That is right. And they will be in the same heat again tonight if they do both qualify for finals. They will be, and I think they are both going to be comfortably qualifying for finals tonight. Making sure they got clean swims is really something to do. And then really taking care of yourself in between sessions. I don't know what else Cole or Cameron is swimming today, but we will definitely keep you posted, and you'll hear their names if they are in any other events. But here we go, Cole Mitchell taking this one home. Yeah, Beautifully executed to her backstroke. Wow, Cameron and Stern is up on. for grabs. Stern it up is. for grabs in lanes three, six, and seven. Still bunching up real closely, but Cole Mitchell touching the water 220.37, followed by Cameron 224.20. And third place, I'm thinking. It came right down to the touch there, but it was lane three. Ian from the Ian from the Pictou County Mariners. Touching the wall at a 229.76. I saw Cole touch the wall, look at the board and go, ooh. So adding that 10 seconds, I don't know if he's too pleased, but I do think he, I know, or I do know that he will be ready for tonight. He will be, and let's hope so, because Owen is going to throw down a fast time tonight. Oh, Entered at a 217.27. And he's going to have that time of Cole, 220 in mind. Yeah. So we're going to see. We're going to see a battle tonight. I'm expecting some big time drops as well. But that rounds out the men's 200 meter backstroke, and we are moving on to the women's 100 meter breaststroke. Hundred breaststroke. One of my favorite events. This is your wheelhouse. This is. I actually have learned how to swim this event quite well. You're taking out your first 50 as though you're swimming a 50 breast. That's right. So you're really pumping. You want to set the tone really early on, get the rhythm in the arms, make sure your legs are whipping back fast. And once you hit that wall, you don't want to stick to that wall. You want to touch and go as soon as you can, as quickly as possible. And on that back half, you're just pushing, trying to keep your tempo up, hips up high, and really staying on the surface of the water. You're looking at the second wall and just trying to outtouch everyone else in the heat. That's right. You really want to be efficient in this 100 breaststroke. There's a lot of little things that go into making a good 100 breaststroke. So about seven minutes behind right now. This is supposed to start at 10.01, but that is totally fine because these swimmers will have lots of time in between sessions to get ready. Hayden. That is true. But here we go. The first heat of women's 100 breaststroke up and ready to go. Madam Referee. In lane three from Churro Centurions, Finn Riley. In lane four from St. John's Legends at 10 years old, Claire Chin. In lane five from St. John's as well is Sophia Vavisauer. You really wanna be on top of the water here. Yeah, you really wanna be pushing those hips up to the surface really getting that tempo up in the arms, and this is what these girls are doing right here. Especially in lane three, seeing R Finn Riley push like that, I, I'm looking forward to the, f to the second half of her race. Yeah, it is only there and back. You know, all these girls, too young to, s to have a real time standard for their age group, but they can be chasing that 13-year-old Eastern's cut. That 13-year-old Eastern's cut of a 121.62. So quite fast, but then again, there is one, two, even three years for Claire Chin to be getting that yeah. time. They've got a lot of time to be working on that. Yeah. And you know, at a young age, it's very, very important to be very be diverse in your swimming, not just focus on that one stroke. But here we go. It's pretty, pretty even throughout the middle of the pool here. They are going stroke for stroke in lane three and four, Finn and Claire. Having the top seat time in this event, Madison Bond at a 114.45 already stamping that junior trials cut. She will be chasing the 113.10 mark of the seniors cut though, not knowing when she turns 18 years old. Right at the finish there, it was lane three's Finn from the Truro Centurions. Centurions touching the wall at a 139.09, followed by Lane 4's Claire from St. John's Legend at a 139.43. And 
rounding out the field, Sophia from the St. John's Legend touching the ball at a 141. Great first heat there. Yeah, I was happy with that. I'm looking forward to everything the, the swimmers have to throw down, Hayden. Yeah, it, this is going to be very exciting. There's only four heats of this women's event, so this is heat two on the blocks right now. In lane one from St. John's Legends is Amelia Young. In lane two from Churro Centurions, Blair Lambert. In lane three also from Churro, Phoebe Hickox. In lane four from Sa Sackville Waves, Juliet Mercier. In lane five from Halifax Trojans, Julie Nolan McCarthy. In lane six from Mount Pro Marlins, Mia Farrell. In lane seven from Port Hawkesbury, Annie Ganesh is Sophie Hanna. And in lane eight from St. John's Legends is Georgia Breen, Hayden. Already making a statement, Juliet Mercier. I know, I am speechless. She is throwing her arms forward. After seeing what she was able to do last night in that 200 meter breaststroke, stamping that junior trials cut. That is right. Going to Victoria this summer for that meet. Uh, you know, there's not many 200 breaststrokers that are sufficient at 100 breaststrokes, so it's going to be interesting to see what she can do here. Yeah, really trying to adapt to figure out what they're good at, see if they have better front end or back end speed. But, but right wow. now in lane five, Julie Nolan McCarthy. Making a statement in this first in that first 50, it is only there and back, so she is closing the, she's closing the meters down here. Pulling away from the pack at 18 years, or excuse me, at 14 years old. She is hunting that time. She is pumping into the wall. Touching the wall to 114.46 in lane five. That is a staggering, that is a fantastic time by yep, her. So that right there is a junior trials cut, better wow. in the time of a 115.78 at 14 years old. Congratulations. That is that, that is, is phenomenal. Really something. She is then followed by Juliet Mercer at a 118.69 and in lane 6 Mia from the Mount Pearl Marlins. Touching the wall at 120.55. Great swims from those ladies. On to heat 3. And they are off. In lane one from St. John's Legends, Sarah Burt. In lane two from Churro Centurions, Piper Hickox. In lane three from Trojans, Isabel Hussey. In lane four from Sackville Waves, Ella Dobson. In lane five from Yarmouth Whitecaps, we have Ava McKenzie. In lane six from Wolfville, from Wolfville, there's Maggie Graves. In lane seven, also from Wolfville, Chloe Bishop. And in lane eight from Mount Pearl Marlins is Emma Babasauer. You know, it seems we're missing the uh, lanes four and five. Oh, apologies. Maybe some... Maybe some strategic swimming going on right now. So no Ella Dobson from Sackville Waves, no Ava McKenzie from Yarmouth Whitecaps. That is right. So it is all up to the side lanes here. Lanes one, two, three, six, seven, and eight. There will be a gap between those lanes. So you know what that gap reminds me of, Hayden? Do you remember our dual meet with Acadia? I do remember. This year? Having a two-lane buffer. Yeah, having a two-lane buffer. Due to COVID. Due to COVID. So you're really still trying to get some racing out in there. But we were as safe as we could be, Katie being on one side of the pool, us being on the other. That is right. But sharing this pool so we could throw down some great times. And it was just that. That's exactly what happened. Coming off the training camp week, it was great. But pulling ahead, lane three right now, Isabel Hussey from Halifax Trojans trying to gain this one seed in this heat. It's going to come down to the finish, though. Lane one, don't count her out. Sarah Burt from St. John's Legend at 16 years old, trying to better her time of 122.42 for short course. And it is Isabel Hussey touching the wall first. At a 125.55, followed by lane one, Sarah Burt from the St. John's Legend at a 126.38. Then, Maggie Gra Graves from the... Maggie Graves from the Wolfville, Wolfville team. Touching the wall at 126.98, but this is the final heat. Wolfville Tritons. This is the final heat of the women's 100-meter breaststroke. In lane one for St. John's Legends, Eve Martin. In lane two from Port Hawkesbury, Annie Ganish, Lily McLean. In lane three from Churro Centurions, Audrey Parker. In lane four also from Churro, Madison Bond. In lane five from Halifax Trojans, Ella Collins. In lane six from Crusaders, Olivia Jodry. And in lane seven from Halifax Wavecutters, Hannah Burt. In lane eight, rounding out the fields from St. John's Legends is Mackenzie Wishart. You really got to get out strong in this event. You want to keep your eye on Ella Collins. She had a monster swim last night in the 200 breast. She did, Getting out touched by Juliet Mercier. Both going under that trials cut, though. 
Ella Collins trying to better her time today of 117.03. Not sure how old that time is. Not going in with the one seed. Second to Madison Bond of Churro Centurions. By looking at the clock here, she is out that much just ahead of Madison Bond going out of 35.76. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen in this last 35, 25 meters. Come back into 38. That would be a 113. Yeah, but so here we go. how well they can hold on. Ella Collins increasing her stroke rate. Has Madison Bond left it too late? to make her move. Not sure, I'm sure we can see, but Madison Bond's hips popping up. She's trying to get going, but she is diving a little deep. Ella Collins staying a little more on the surface of the water, wearing that Laser Elite 2, one of my favorite suits. That is, that is a fast suit. Touching wow. the wall at a 115.31. What a swim from Ella Collins. So again, under that junior's cut of 115.78, getting wow. that junior trials time. Doing really, really good. She has a smile on her face. I'm sure she's happy with that I one. I am maybe. sure she is too. Giving a high five to Ma to uh, Madison Bond in lane four, who touched the wall at a 119.60. So it's going to be exciting tonight. Yeah, great sportsmanship there from Ella. She is a leader on the Trojans team. This is that her last is year right. with the team because she is moving is to right. university swimming next year. Yeah. But I'm excited to watch her progress next year as well as she continues to excel in breaststroke. Here yeah. we are, heat one of boys, 100 meter breaststroke, Madam Referee. In lane one from Halifax Trojans, Ethan Daniel. In lane three from Fast from Port Hawkesbury, Annie Ganesh, Riley Avery. In lane four from CBSC, Aiden Mercer. In lane five from Mount Pearl Marlins, Liam Tweedy. In lane six from Halifax Trojans, Oliver Bourne. And in lane eight, and in lane eight from Greenwood Dolphins, it's Owen Bond. They are out fast, touching the wall. First on the far end of the pool is Liam from Mount Pearl Marlins, touching the wall at a 3268. So he is he is out fast. He knows he's out chasing times. And here he comes. He had a killer 200 breaststroke yesterday. Taking home that taking home that win in his age category. Yeah, lane five looking really, really strong. Liam Tweedy, 16 years old from Mount Pearl Marlins. Looking great, super high on the water, and you see his arms reaching out, really trying to grab the most water. Coming in first out the wall is Liam Tweedy. Just that, followed close second is Aiden Mercer of CBSC. Liam Tweedy going a 111.49. So three seconds off that junior trials time of 108.10, but that is a very fast time. Just shy of that Eastern's time, 110.54. So he'll be chasing that tonight. Yeah, and he'll be doing just that. That was a great morning swim, and I'm looking forward to what Liam Tweedy, Mount Pearl Marlins, can throw down later on. That is right. On to the second heat here. It's two of three. And they are off. In lane one from St. John's Legends is Carter King. In lane two from Pictou County Mariners, Luke McLean. In lane three from Halifax Trojans, Eason Zoo. In lane four from... Wolfville, Tritons, Gabriel Graves. In lane five from Wolfville as well as Alexander Glenn. In lane six from Crusaders, Leon Bautista. And in lane seven from St. John's Legends, Thomas Best. Hayden, these names are getting more and more familiar. I'm they loving are. this. Really specialty strokers, trying to dial in, see where their wheelhouse is, what they're good at, and really focus on that and just push that as far as they can. That is right. And it's been phenomenal to see who's swimming what events in, this, in, that first, in the first two days, three days if you count in that distance race. Yeah, really looking good. And you can see everyone on the side really getting ready, talking to their coaches, getting the whole debrief, maybe even race on for the next race on the docket because after this, folks, we're looking at the 100-meter butterfly. Yeah, wow, what a race that is. But what a race we're having in the pool right now in between lanes 4, 5, and 7. Thomas Best leading the way in lane 7 of St. John's. Really close, though, in lane 5 is Gabriel Graves of Wolfville Tritons. Followed closely by lane four, Gabriel Graves. Also wow, it is going trains. to be Thomas Best touching the wall at a 113.23, followed by lane four, Gabrielle at a 114.16, followed by his teammate Alexander at a 114.28. So great swims from those boys. So that 113.23 is just shy of the Eastern's cut of 112.01 for 15 year old boys. I bet he'll be chasing that tonight. Yeah, as we know, the pool's always faster at night after getting a little bit of rest, maybe closing, get a little bit of shut-eye for a little bit, but here we are hitting heat three, last heat. And 
and they are off. In lane one from St. John's Legends, Alan Sala. In lane two from Bluefins, Logan Goss. In lane three from Pictou County Mariners, Blaze Stevenson. In lane four from Sackville Waves, Nelson Daniels. In lane five from Sackville Waves, Ron Levitt. In lane six from Halifax Trojans at 11 years old, Josh Tumampil. And in lane seven from Halifax Trojans is Agron Ramos. That middle of the pool looking very strong, throwing their arms forward. It's also interesting to see the different underwater styles. I know there's two different styles that are going around the pool these days. There's a dive, fly kick, pull, and then recover. Or there's a dive, pull, fly kick, simultaneously recover. Yeah. So it's all up to preference there again. It really, really is. There I are some that more, are more efficient. Right now, I'm not, I didn't catch what lane four did, but we will definitely take a look at that tonight. Lane four being Nelson Daniels of Sackville Wave, 17 years old, trying to better his time of 113.05, and I think he will do that. Being challenged by Agron Ramos in lane seven, looking very, very strong. Agron really pumping those arms, not really gliding all that much. But we can see Nelson Daniels, lane four. Wow, having a day. Touching the wall to 113.99, so just getting under that 114 mark. Followed by lane sevens, Argon Ramos from the Halifax Trojans at a 115.83. So those are some great times, great swims from this morning. Punching their ticket for tonight. I do believe.
Hello and welcome back. We're starting it off with the women's, the first heat of the women's 100 fly. Yeah, full heat here, Hayden, so I'm excited to see what these girls are able to throw down. That is right. And they are off. In lane one from Wolfville, Chloe Bishop. In lane two from St. John's Legends, Mackenzie Wishart. In lane three from St. John's Legends, Kiara Higdon. In lane four, also from St. John's, Ariana Higdon. So maybe a sister rivalry there. In lane five, Avery Stade from Halifax Trojans. In lane six from Churro Centurions, Audrey Parker. In lane seven, St. John's Legends, Harlow LeBlanc. And in lane eight from Churro Centurions, Finn Riley. This is another 100 meters. It's just there and back. Yeah, lots of quick sprints today in the prelims. It's going to be a fast finals tonight. So hopefully these swimmers will know how to time manage properly. Make that sure is they right. have enough time behind the blocks to wake up their muscles, recruit those muscles, get ready, but also not enough time to psych themselves out. That's right. And it looks as though there is a little, little issue with the board for second place because the uh, time is still there. But we're going to be very interested to see how fast these girls go. In lane five, Avery stayed from the Halifax Trojans Club, taking this one out fast and strong, but she's being hunted down by Ariana in lane four. Very interesting side breathing from Ariana there. That is yep. a tactic seen amongst many very quick yep, Sarah flyers. Yep, Sarah does that That's as well. Right. Often doing that, just part of her technique, so she's not doing it on purpose, but it also lets you see your opponents only to one side, but once you touch that wall, you're flipping sides. That's true. Touching the wall first in lane five with a 119.63 is Avery Stade from the Halifax Trojans Club. Unfortunately, I cannot see the time for second place there because- in Lane four, Ariana Higdon. It is the current time of day, not the time of how fast that swimmer just went. So hopefully we'll get the board sorted out for there. On to the next heat. These hunters are moving very quickly. Yep, so here we are, full heat. First one in a while, too. Excuse me, I did not realize that that past heat was a full heat of eight girls. But here we are. Lane one is a no-show. So in lane two, Maya Rasic of Halifax Trojans. Lane three, Sarah Power of St. John's Legends. Lane four, from Wolfville Tritons. Shannon Guy, lane five from St. John's Legends, Eve Martin, also from St. John's, Emma Angelova, and in lane seven as well from St. John's, Lauren Moores, lane eight, Yale Bloom from Halifax Trojans. You know, I can't say 100 Fly is my wheelhouse, but I've seen some pretty, pretty phenomenal 100, 100 Flies swum in my swimming career. Oh yeah, you know, people are so, so aggressive, especially in the fly with that first 50. Like we said before, fly's the second fastest stroke of all the strokes in swimming. It, w so it is. It's great. And due to the time, just a little segue, because the time clock's not working, be sure to tune in on Meet Mobile. That is correct. If you correct. want the most recent results, or search up 2022 David Fry Long Course Provincial Nova Scotia, you'll be able to find the live results link there as well, folks. Shannon from the... Shannon from the Wolfville Tritons. She is taking this one out fast and strong. Looks like second will be lane six. Emma Angelova of St. John Legends at 15 years old. Great swim there as well. Does she hold off lane three? She does. She does. A 114.69 followed by lane threes. Sarah Power, another St. John Legends swimmer. 115.62. St. John's cleaning up at this Nova Scotian Provincials. That is right. It would be very interesting to see what the points are looking like after this morning session. Yeah, and we will, we will, we will get it. A point count for you guys going into tonight's finals. We'll say that at the end of this meet. That is right. And this morning's session, excuse me. And they're off. Again, No, no. there's a no-show in lane eight, so no Heather Smart in this heat. But in lane one from Mount Pearl Marlins, Allison Duffett. In lane two, Maya Johnson, Halifax Trojans. In lane three, Caitlin Taylor from Sackville Waves. In lane four, Madison Bond of Churro Centurions. In lane five, Eliza Stokesbury Price from Wolfville Tritons. In lane six, Ella Collins again, Halifax Trojans. And in lane seven, Lexi Quinn from Cape Breton Dorados. Kaylin Taylor, she is known for her butterfly. Yeah, being relentless. So very strong in Dalhousie practices. Great. It's going to be interesting to see how Ella Collins adapts to this butterfly, knowing she's a breaststroker, throwing down those two that trial right. cuts. Punching your junior trials ticket in the 200 breast last night. And again, this morning in prelims, that 100 breast junior trials. But emerging from that wall is Ella Collins in, beg my pardon, that is... Lane 5. Eliza. Eliza Stokesbury Price of Wolfville Tritons. She is putting the hammer down in this 100 fly. 
doing a great job. Followed closely by Madison Bond. And in third, Caitlin Taylor of Sackville Waves. Can Caitlin Taylor bring it home and close that gap ever so slightly? It looks like Madison Bond may just take this. It's going to come down to the touch. And it was lane fives. Elijah Stokesbury Price. Coming home with a 110 6 0, followed relatively very closely by lane four, Madison Bond. And then Caitlin Taylor's from the Sackville Waves touching the ball to 111 97. Still, that clock is for second place is bugging out just a little bit. So we can't see what second place is going right now. Nope, but so we know who second place is, and that is Madison Bond. On to the next heat. In lane one from Crusaders, Rosalind Tate. In lane two from Sackville Waves, Ash Tomlick. In lane three from Crusaders, Nayara Smith. In lane four from Halifax Trojans, Rachel, Rachel Blackmore, excuse me. In lane five, Kaylee, Mc, Kaylee Murren from Mount Pearl Marlins. In lane six, Clara Derling from Halifax Trojans. And also from Trojans in lane seven is Aaliyah Bloom. You can see as the heats progress, that middle of the field, they are going a significantly lot faster. Yeah, going very fast in the middle of the pool. Great to see that as well. But you know, Hayden, there's always those sleepers in these heats. That is, you always know that some is people true. have a wicked meet. Maybe it's a breakout meet. You know, sometimes training's going so very well, and all you need is just one great race, and this is what it'll do. Emerging from that wall, though, is Rachel Blackmore from the Halifax Trojans Club, followed very closely by Kaylee Murren from the Ma Mount Pearl Marlins. Marlins. Don't count out Niara the Smith from the Crusaders. Yep, doing phenomenal right now. They're hunting down their Eastern times. It is going to be lane fours. Rachel Blackmore from the Halifax Trojans going a 106.96. At yep. the age of 16. Still chasing that one double, oh, excuse me. 106.76 is the cut as well. So she is going to be chasing that tonight, 106.96. Yep. So point two, you know, that's comes down to the dive or just a turn maybe she slipped on that wall maybe she'll just take one less breath but i yeah. know that she has it in her and i'm she excited does. to see that race tonight yeah this is the final heat of the women's hundred fly let's see how fast these girls can go Ashley McKenna, top seed in this event. Looking at that Eastern's time of 105.64. Trying to chip away. She needs to chip away about one second, but I think she might be able to do it, Hayden. Looking very strong, though, but lane five, Hannah McLeod. In lane one, Bluefins, Amelia Smith. In lane two, Isabel Hussey from Halifax Trojans. In lane three, also from Trojans, Emma Hamlin. Lane four, Ashley McKenna from Trojans. Lane five, Hannah McLeod, Sackville Waves. Lane six, Aideen McGrath from Trojans. In lane seven, Olivia Williams from Wolfville Tritons. And in lane eight from Churro Centurions, Phoebe Hickox. They should be emerging from that wall any minute, any any minute, any second now. They're going way faster than minutes. It is going to be lane six. Aideen McGrath. She is setting the pace strong at, at 15 years old. At 15 years old. Wow, Hayden. 15 years old, chasing that time of 106.76. Can she do that? She's going to charge into this wall here, and it's going to be real close. I think she's... She is just over that time of 106. 76. She's gone a 106.81, so that is very, very close. That comes down right to the touch Great there. Great swim at 15 years old, Aideen McGrath from Halifax Trojans. Better in her time of 111.01 wow. with that seed time. That is a huge time for her. Congratulations there, Aideen. On to the men's... Onto the men's 100 fly now. There's only three heats of this. Yep, so not too, too long. Running five minutes behind schedule. But there again, Hayden, doesn't matter. Because everyone will get up and ready to race, regardless of time it is. some last minute checks to make sure the clock is working trying to get it so back up and see. working makes it easier for us makes yeah. it easier for swimmers knowing what they went makes it easier so we can tell you what's going on yep 
just a quick reset of the clock here. Hopefully to get rid of the time of day, because we don't really care what time of day it is right now. Just focus on some fast times. Yeah, that's that's what's going on. Lane five right there, Ron taking one last sip of water before his race. Staying hydrated, that's very important in a hot environment like a swimming pool. Oh yeah, especially the Dalplex. Oh, a little bit of confusion there, but I think we're ready to go. So here we go, this is the first heat of the men's 100 fly. And they're off. In lane one from Halifax Trojans, Ryan Hull. In lane two from Trojans as well, Agron Ramos. In lane three from Tro Centurions, Joseph Duffy. In lane four from Bluefins, Daniel Pierce. In lane five from Sackville Waves, Ron Levitt. In lane six from Mount Pearl Marlins, Felix Shepard. And in lane eight from Halifax Trojans at 14 years old, Dmitry Popkov. You know, only being three heats, this is going to go by real quick, but these swimmers are going to be going real fast. Yeah, I think everyone might get a double swim here, Hayden. I, I do believe so. You know, that is the one beauty of having not that many swimmers in each event. Yeah, looking to guarantee double swim, so you know, why not give it your all tonight, or That's this morning right. even. Lane four out with a staggering 27. Wow. Daniel is he Pierce, looking to break a minute? Sea time of 106.1 at 16 years old, you know, this is great. His time standard for Easterns is 100051. So he trying to show off six hunting, seconds. He's probably hunting that down that cut. time. It's going to be really close here. It's going to come right down to the finish. Just shortening up just this ever so slightly, but he is touching the wall at a 1-0-0-54. So that is an incredible swim by him, followed by Argon Ramos in lane two with a 104-62. And then lane six is Felix Shepard from the Mount Pearl Marlins touching the wall at a 105-11. Daniel Pierce touching at a 1-0-0-54. Puts him 0 0.03 seconds off that Eastern's cut. So he's definitely going to have that in mind tonight wow. for this 100 fly final. You saw him there just shortening up ever so slightly. I think if you had that glide in there, Hayden, I think he would have had that. I think he would have, but, you know, let's see what he can do tonight. Coach will definitely be talking to him about that. I can guarantee you. I, I can guarantee that, too. I'm going to be, I'm really excited to see what he can do tonight. That's a fast swim. That Setting is. the tone in the first heat, but, you know, like you said, not too many heats. No. Gotta get out there. Gotta make a statement. Yeah, you gotta be the one to go fast. Right now, Oliver DeWood looking at the competition in lane four, looking big behind the blocks. Um, Seems as though we're missing lanes five, five. Sean, Sean from the you. Halifax Trojan Club. So it would be very interesting to see if he does show up or not. Maybe it's a tactical tactical miss of race so he can focus on his 400 free maybe if he's in yeah, that race. Uh, maybe he is in that 400 free. Sean Yu. Here we go. This is Heat 2. In lane 1 from St. John's Legends, Carter King. In lane 2 from St. John's as well, Aiden Carroll. In lane 3 from Cornerbrook, Nathan Flynn. In lane 4, Oliver DeWood from Crusaders. In lane 5, Sean Yu, who is a no-show for this race. Would be from Halifax Charge and still is, just not here. Ethan Kershaw, lane 6, Sackville Waves, and in lane 7 from Halifax Trojans, Cameron Harding. These boys are out fast, fast and strong, and I think that's a key in this 100 fly. Touching the wall first in lane 3 is Nathan Flynn from... Nathan Flynn from Cornerbrook. Touching the wall at 28.35, followed by lane 2, Aiden from the St. John's Legend, touching at a 28. So these boys are going to be out fast. Yeah, lane they 3, Nathan looking very strong, breathing every stroke. But, you know, maybe that's... Oh, actually, not breathing every stroke. Keeping his head down there. I do like that breathing pattern. Same. That one, seems one, like down for two. Wow. I really... En I'm enjoying that. That. Seems, that seems to be very Followed efficient. Followed closely by Aiden Carroll of St. John's Legends in lane two. Don't forget about lane seven, though. Cameron Harding of Halifax Trojans. And lane four, Oliver DeWood. And it was Nathan taking it home with a 102.61, followed by lane two, Aiden Carroll from the St. John's Legend, touching the ball at a 104.58. And then in lane seven... Cameron Harding from the Halifax Trojans will touching the ball at a 106 double O. So this will be the last heat of men's hundred fly diving into the wall right here. It's gonna be very exciting to see how fast these boys can swim. Still even in no time in this heat, Hayden, so watch yeah, out for lane eight. That is what happens when you circle seed. 
you can get times of ranging all sorts in every single heat. In lane one from Halifax Trojans, Christopher Nguyen. In lane two, Craig Bush from Churro. In lane three, Alex Johnson Humble from Crusaders. In lane eight from Halifax. In lane four from Halifax Trojans, Will Meyer. In lane five, Alexander Bouchard, also from Trojans. In lane six, Ben Levitt from SWAT. In lane seven from St. John's Legends, Evan Fang. And in lane eight, Owen Carew from Mount Pearl Marlins. I just wonder, will Craig Bush's conversion time be ever so slightly faster than Will Meyer's time? That's that's what it seems like right here. Yeah. You know, Will Meyer is going 28-22. That's what he's that's what he's coming out of the wall with. Out fast, Will setting a nice speed. Looking good. Still very strong. Don't forget about lane two though, Craig Bush. Yeah. Originally something at U Ottawa back home here now in Churro. That is right. But here comes Will Meyer looking like he trains fly out of his mind. Because he is attacking this wall. But so is Craig Bush. Don't count anybody out here. Doesn't look like anyone's tired, but that is a great swim. Will Meyer touching the wall at a 10072, followed by lane two's Craig Bush at a 10193. And then rounding out the top three is Alexander Bouchard from the Halifax Trojans touching at a 10407. So Will Meyer, 100, just off the 5918 cut for Easterns. Maybe he'll be chasing that tonight. Same because with his Alexander. Times at 5990. Alexander Bouchard, he just shy of that 14 year old 100 fly time of a 103.45 that Eastern's That's time very so fast they will all be hunting those times tonight but on to an event I personally love the 400 free last event of the day here in event that number right. 31 and 32 we're alternating men's and women's heats here um, this is your wheelhouse. You love this event. You went a crazy fast time at AUS. Let's point that out. You had a crazy comeback. You're Thank flipping you. the wall in fifth, and then you touched in what? You, you touched second or third? Third, I touched did. Touched third. That was one monstrous race. 403, I believe you went? That is right. That is right. 403, that is something. I mean, takes a lot of training, but here we go. The ladies in the pool. Ladies in the pool, in lane one from Halifax Trojans, Allison Redford. In lane two, also from Trojans, Cassidy Carroll. In lane three from Sackville Waves, Juliet Mercier. In lane four, Ella Dobson from Sackville as well. Isabel Melanson, Halifax Trojans in lane five. Charlotte Evans from Halifax Trojans in lane six. Ashley McKenna of the Trojans in lane seven. And in lane eight, Caitlin Taylor from Sackville Waves. You know, this race is as tactical as any other race, but probably one of the most tactical races there is. One in to make the move, one to throw the hammer, one to really get those legs going and really start changing it up. That's right, and it, it's it's lane it's lane five, three, one, and two. Wow. Well, I mean, it's everybody fighting for it here. Lane five, Isabel Mil Milanson. Sorry, I beg. My Isabel Melanson. That's right. I am very sorry. She's having the ever so slightest lead over. Lane three's Juliet Mercer from the S Sackville Waves. Wow, Juliet, she's had a quite the day here. Swimming the 100 breaststroke as yeah, well. Doing a great job. Knowing she's a breaststroker, it's going to be interesting to see how well of a distance swimmer she is for this 400 meter freestyle. That's right. And she is gaining on Isabel in lane five. It's going to be... We're Come, they're coming into the wall halfway here. Outside lane, Allison Redford from Halifax Trojans at 16 years old is really picking up the tempo here at the 200 meter mark. I'm liking this attack. What are you thinking here if you're picking up the pace like that? You know, personally, this 150, 200 meter mark, this is really where it starts to hurt because yeah. you're only halfway. You're only halfway done. But this third 100, this is the most important 100 in any 400 you will ever swim. This is where you put the hammer down. This is where you make your move, because this is where everyone starts to hurt. Yep, lane five making a statement right here. Isabel Melanson of Halifax Trojans, 17 years old, trying to better her time of 4.44.52. Already sub five minutes, so Hayden, that's some yeah. 115 pace. That's really that is, good. That is, that is. These are the top women we have in the water right now. Yep, swimming these heats fastest to slowest, still circle seated, but- That is it, right. It is, it is interesting to see that we're gonna be alternating men's women, so 
if you do have a boys swimming, don't go too, too far because we're not going through all the women's heats and then going into the men's. That is right. And still making a move in lane four, though. Ella Dobson seems to be coming back even stronger. So she is definitely making the move in this third 100. She is entered at the fastest time we have this morning. No, she is. I, I'm very sorry. She is actually for women. Sorry, it's very confusing looking at this heat sheet. Yep. Alternating men, women. Ella Dobson having the fastest seat time here for the women's 400 freestyle, the 439.86, and holding that for the men's is Owen Nicholson of Halifax Trojans at a 423.88. But here we go. It's going to be stroke for stroke coming into the last hundred. It's going to be who wants it more Ella in this prelim. Isabella run for her money here, trying to make a move. Ella, 18 years old, looking at Halifax Trojans. Isabel Melanson. I don't know if she has enough room, but Hayden, like we always see, you never know. You don't need that much room to make a move. One you person don't. has to slip one stroke, and the other one just has to be picking it up right there. That's right. And you're off to a great start. That is right. And you don't want to make your move too late because you will run out of pool. There are walls in this pool. Oh, yeah. And those walls are so very important as well. Focusing on those underwaters, three fly kicks off every wall is what most coaches tell you. And not breathing on that first stroke to really start your tempo, get in the rhythm, not break it up because off a wall, second fastest time you're in the pool after that dive. That is right. Emerging from the wall though is Isabel from the Halifax Trojan Club, followed by, by Ella Dobson from Saxo right. Waves. But you know, third is up third. for grabs lanes in one, lanes two, one, two, three. three. Having a day right now is lane two. Cassidy Carroll of Halifax Trojans trying to chase down and gain ground on Juliet Mercier, who we know is a strong breaststroker, and it looks like Cassidy will do just that. Wow, great swim from Isabel from Halifax in lane five, touching the ball to 4.43.67, followed by lane four is Ella Dobson from Sackville, touching the ball at 4.47, and then lane two, Cassidy from the Halifax Trojan, touching the ball to 4.49. So those are some great best times. It seems as though Caitlin Taylor has lost her cap, so she will have to find it. Oh, actually, it's right there at the 24-meter mark, Hayden. If you look down at the pool, it's right there. It the is. The Sackville Waves cap. That's right. Don't want to. Don't want that to uh, Stay in the interfere. Pool. Yeah, don't want that to interfere with lane eight's Riley Avery from Fast. So I really do hope she gets to go get that. Yeah, maybe someone will jump in at the 20-meter mark, but it is just floating there, just hanging out. Caitlin Taylor doesn't seem too phased by the fact that her cap is there. Everyone else looking tired, which is what you like to see. But they yeah. gave it their all. That is but here right. we are, the fastest heat for the men's 400 meter freestyle up on the blocks. In lane one from Cornerbrook, Stephen Miley. Stephen Millie, excuse me. In lane two from Crusaders, Oliver DeWood. In lane three from Wolfville Tritons, Gabriel Graves. In lane four, Owen Nicholson from Halifax Trojans. The fastest seat time of 423.88. In lane five, Agron Ramos from Halifax Trojans. In lane six, Trevor Rowland from Sackville Waves. In lane seven, John Kouet from Halifax Trojans. And in lane eight, Riley Avery from Port Hawkesbury and Ganesh. You know, Agron Ramos. I think this is third event of the day. I do believe so. This is quite the day for our... Aragon Ramos. And this will be a tough double too because if he triple. fires all these swims. Triple even. Triple, yeah. You're right. And I do think he will have a relay as well. So that'll be I four do believe so. Tonight. I pray for that man because those legs will be toast after they that. They will be. Looking very strong in the middle of the pool there is Owen from the Halifax Trojans Club. Owen Nicholson following closely though in lane three is Gabriel Graves of Wolfville Tritons. 4.35.10 his entry time. A little slower than that of Owens, but he's keeping up with him at the 100 meter mark. You know, it's very important to swim your own race in this 400. You don't want to get too excited too early because that will come back and, sorry, that will come back and haunt you in the back half of that race, so. Oh, absolutely, and you know it is, it will be important that you need to attack your race early on, but at the same time, you don't want to be too, too, too worried about going out too fast because in the end you will have to save up some energy for the end that is right and i do believe it's very important to to save but not save too much yeah you don't want to have too too much left in the tank you want to make sure you're making your statement early on so you're not lagging behind everybody else but here we go this is owen nicholson he has entered at the fastest time for the men and he is showing that right now followed by lane three Gabriel from the 
Wolfville Tritons and Argon Ramos in lane five from the Halifax Trojans. Owen is slipping at a 214.03, followed by lane three at 215.23, and followed by lane five at 218.36. So he is definitely, he is also not even in a race suit. No, which is very impressive. So you can think tonight, if he's close to a time standard, maybe gonna suit up. That's that what I is like right. Because if you're able to rip these fast times in a training suit, gosh, it feels like practice. That's right. You put on a race suit, you get into a whole nother vibe, and you're gonna be having a real good day. You know, I had a coach once, he told me, it's not the swimmer, it's sorry, it's not the race, it's not the suit, it's the swimmer. Yeah, so there you are, having a little mix up there, but that's totally right. It really comes down to the swimmer mentally. It does. Making sure you're ready to attack the race in all aspects. And that is what Owen is doing in lane four here. He's putting on a show for these boys. He really Following is pushing the pace. Lane three, Gabriel Graves, but don't forget about Agaron Ramos in lane five. Can he hold on to his that third place right now? Lane Trevor six. Roland. Lane six is Trevor Roland. He is coming. He is pushing this third 100, and that is exactly what you need to do. Challenging Agaron. Let's see who can hold on for this last 100. Owen Nicholson. Pulling away from the pack, though. I really like him how he's attacking this race, Hayden. I am, too. And, you know, props to lane three, Gabriel, from the Wolfville Trident. He is holding on with everything he has left. There is a little battle going on there in five and six between Argon Ramos and Trevor Rowland for third. Let's see, let's see, what, ha let's see what happens. Yeah, one final wall, one little spot left to get those last underwater, really gain that momentum. Let's see what the swimmers have in store for us. This event was swam at U Sports last night. Yep, at U Sports last night, Reagan Crowell of Dalhousie, Dalhousie. Women Tigers actually yeah. qualified in the A final. She did. Just .04 off that team record. She'll have that shot again next year because she's been chasing that down for quite some time now. That is right, but here we go. Argon oh. Ramos has saved it all for the end here. Maybe trying to take over Gabriel Graves. Maybe, but can he hold on? We're gonna have to. We're gonna find out right here. I. Th it's gonna come down right to the touch. Owen taking it home, but Argon Ramos out touching Gabriel. Graves. Gabriel with a 4:36.86, and Gabriel touching at a 4:37.02. So those are some real fast times for prelims. Gonna be a good swim tonight again, as we look forward to hosting you again this evening for. That session is right. number five. Wow. Yeah, wow. Already session number five. Time flies at a swim meet. Here we go, but this is the second heat of women. Let's see if any of these women can qualify for the final tonight. Yep. Absolutely. Off heat three women's 50, or 400 freestyle, excuse me. In lane one from Sackville Waves, Aileen Potvin. In lane two from Crusaders, Sophia Dean. In lane three from Halifax Trojans, Ella Brocklehurst. In lane four, Catherine Dawson from Sackville Waves. In lane five, Rachel Blackmore from Halifax Trojans, also from Trojans, Laura White in lane six, Katarina Brezvan in lane seven, Trojans. And in lane eight, rounding out the Trojans is Aideen McGrath. The 400 free is some event. It really, really is. And you look, when they dive in, you know they have a great race plan in mind, Hayden. That is right, you know. You know, they're thinking down to the, practicing this, the routine, the, just the practice, really. It during is. Those swim, during those swim periods. That's right. Your whole team. It is so important to execute your race plan. Yeah. And s swim your own race and not get, not get too worried about what's happening throughout the rest of the pool. Because right now, Eden. Ideen McGrath. Ideen McGrath in lane eight from the Halifax Trojans. She's taking it out really fast with the 106. She's smoking this thing. She is. And that that time of 50436. She's, she's looking to, to shatter. She is looking to cut some huge time off there. Great. I'm excited to see. I believe this is going to be a double swim, so we will see this again tonight. 
So that is right. 400 IM last night where they had a double swim. Um, so getting ready, seeing these girls try out one sort of race plan, hoping it executes well because they'll be able to replicate that this evening. That is right. And wow. But I 400 am very free. happy with what I'm seeing so far. There's lots of things that can go right. There's lots of things that can go wrong. So you have to be very... Like I said earlier, you have to swim your own race here. You don't want to you don't want to let other people influence how you're swimming a race and maybe ditching your race plan cuz it's very important to maintain oh, what you're doing. And then again, finals tonight starting at 5 p.m., so be sure to tune in again with Hayden and I as we're going to be broadcasting live from Dalplex for the 2022 David Fry Long Course Provincial Championships here in Nova Scotia. Aideen McGrath in lane 8, still putting on a show for everyone here at the Dalplex. Aideen taking out a 217.92, so we're going to see that time get absolutely shattered with 504. Yep, stunning lane 4, Kath Catherine Dawson, Sackville Waves, who was the top seed in this heat. But again, never sleep on those outside lanes, you never know what yeah. they have in their back pocket. That is right, and it does look like Aideen. Catherine is putting down the hammer in this third 100. Yep, Catherine's doing a great job. Even in lane one, holding on is Aileen Potvin. That is right. Very happy. And just looking, flipping at the wall with a five second, four and a half second advantage is still Aideen in lane eight. Yeah, so can she hold on one last three hundred? It's 30072, lane three flipping Ella Brocklehurst. That is right. But here we go. So it looks like Aideen is even picking up steam going in, into this second to last wall at the 300 meter mark, Hayden. That is right. Doing a great job. Don't count out lane two. Sophia Dean from the Crusaders, she is making a move on lane threes. Ella Brock Brocklehurst from the Halifax Trojans. So can Aideen hold on to her lead? I. You know, I'm pretty confident. She looks very strong in that water. Yeah, breathing every three, which I like as well. So, you know, not getting into a rhythm, but also not needing as much air as everyone else. That's true. You know, as a distance swimmer, breathing every one sometimes is the strategy because yep. you do have that strong side. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, making sure that you're staying smooth, staying on top of the water, that you're still being efficient and not losing too, too much power is really important when you come down to these distance races, Hayden. And Aideen flipping at 408 double O, so she has to go a 52 of a, f a 50 f a 54 to yeah. better time. So, so I a think 56. Yeah, she's, that 504. And she's I think gonna she do will that. Be crushing this best time of 504 36. She's got the adrenaline rushing through her blood, leading this, leading this heat from the outside lane. Aideen McGrath, 15 years old, Halifax Trojan. Doing a great job, but she's five meters out of the wall. She will be a decisive first. Follow Touching the wall at 4.43.36. In second, and I don't know. Lane two, lane four, Hayden. Who do you got? It was close. Lane four. Coming in, Rachel, excuse me, Catherine Dawson getting the second spot in this heat, followed by Crusader Sophia Dean in lane two for third. Wow, great times from all of these ladies. I think A. Dean might have been hunting down that Eastern's cut of... 441.63, so maybe tonight. Yeah, maybe we'll see that tonight. Saving a little in the tank, I'm guessing, because she was maybe. out really fast. She was, and you know, she did swim that all by herself. Yeah, She really. was pacing off of herself right there, so. Put her in a fast heat of people, all same similar speed. You're going to have yourself a great race, Aideen. That is true, and here we go. This is the second heat of the men's. And they're off in lane one from Greenwood Dolphins Swim Club, Owen Bond. In lane two from Sackville Waves, Nelson Daniels. Also from Sackville Waves in lane three is Ethan Kershaw. Darcy Butler in lane four from Mount Pearl Marlins. In lane five from Halifax Trojans, Hassan Hosni. In lane six, Jonathan Earl from Halifax Trojans. In lane seven from, Corner, from Cornerbrook, Liam McArthur. And in lane eight from Churro Centurions is Joseph Duffy. It does look like Owen Bond is a no-show in this race. Yeah. So... Who knows? Hope everything's all right with him. Yeah. But 
He was already sub five minutes, which is already something great, but it would have been awesome to see what he'd be able to do in those outside lanes. But right now here in lane four, taking it out really strong is Darcy Butler of Mount Pearl Marlins. Out of 28. Yeah. That's some start for 400. That is a great swim, and he is looking to build on that lead that he's out fast. Wearing a speedo, pure valor it looks like. It does. That is a beautiful suit. That orange matching his cap. Watching the Mount Pearl Marlins orange cap. Flipping at a 102.16, so he is going to be, he's going to be hunting times. Darcy Butler out very fast to Mount Pearl Marlins ahead of the field. Still hard to say who's in second, who's third, as lanes two, three, five, and six are all very, very close. That is right. That Eastern's cut for 16-year-old boys is 4.20. Point nine zero, so that is quite a fast time right there. A very fast time. That is holding on average 105s. Yeah. Excuse me. So Darcy far, being out a 102. 102. You can expect a little drop off. Yeah. But how how long can he hold on for? He's got some room. Yeah, a little buffer there. So. That's usually yeah. that that's usually how the uh, first hundred works. You go out a little faster. You know, you get a little buffer room. Then you settle into a pace, and then you bring it home that last hundred. Oh, absolutely. And Darcy Butler is doing just that. Legs kicking a little bit there. I'm expecting to see him a little more this third 100. It's probably yeah. part of the race plan. So you go out strong with the legs. Sorry, go out strong with the arms. Save the legs for the second half of the race because that is what's going to separate him from the rest of the pack. You know, looking at the middle of the field there, second and third are up for grabs for anybody. But two, three, Darcy, four, five, really. Darcy flipping at 2.11.05. Yep, so that's playing right there. 108 high, maybe 109 low. Um, still good, so there was a little drop off as we yeah. said before, but still on pace for this 420 time. Here we go, lane three. Emerging, Ethan, Ethan Kershaw. Ethan Kershaw, wow, he is putting the hammer down in this, hun this third 100. Old. This is, for at such a young age, there's not even time standards for him. No, 13 years old, he might be chasing the 14 year old Eastern cut for boys of 431.73. That would be, what a time for that, for him, that would be. But again, like we said, there is nothing for 13-year-old boys. So he's just waiting to age up and get ready. That's right. Get into the field. He's got to have a bright future ahead of him being in this fast heat and throwing down crazy fast times like this, Aiden. That is right. And he is currently sitting in second place right now, touch, flipping at a 254.17, just ahead of lane five. So that marks the 250 Hassan. mark, folks. Yeah. Right here, Darcy Butler gaining on his lead. About 15, I'd even say maybe 20 meters ahead of the pack. I don't know. Ethan Kershaw is cutting away his lead ever so slightly. It may not look like it because he is so far ahead, but Darcy flipping at 319.46. Yeah. Looking extremely smooth. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Followed by Ethan Kershaw flipping at a 329.79. Followed by, then lane it's five. Hassan in lane five, a 331.55. Wow, Ethan Kershaw, he knows how to swim the second half of this race. Oh yeah, doing a great job. He's picking up steam at the end of the second 100, or second, or sorry, the first 200. And his back end is one yeah. heck of a race right now, Hayden. This is all back end, and that's really what you got to be in this 400. You want to be out strong and fast, but you want to come back. It, you, it should feel like your body is falling apart in this last 200, and I'm sure he's feeling it right now. He is increased his lead on Hassan. He has cut down the lead between him and Darcy. So it's going to be very interesting to see. You can see him just emerging from that wall all by himself. Yeah, Darcy picking up steam though with about five meters left to go. Darcy will be your heat winner for heat four of this 400 meter freestyle. Touching the wall to 426.12. That is a fantastic time. Cutting off even more time from his best life, his lifetime best time of 431.34. But here comes Ethan Kershaw touching the wall at a 440.21, which is just 440.21. Sorry, my bad if so I said 430. A, so he is a little off that Eastern timestamp, but again, second swim tonight. I'm excited to see what Ethan Kershaw, at four, uh, 13 years old, excuse me. That is right. And then Hassan touching the wall at a 445.21. You know, strategic swimming this morning. But on to your next, on to the next heat here. It, this is the third heat of women's 400 free. Just looking at the heat sheet here. 
Etta in lane seven from the Halifax Trojans. She is at a she's at an age of twelve. Yeah, and here we are in lane one from Cornerbrook, Natalie Parsons in lane two from Wolfville, Olivia Williams in lane three from Halifax Trojans, Eliana McDonald in lane four from Halifax Trojans, Isabel McBride in lane five from Sackville Waves, Alana Mercier in lane six from Crusaders, Olivia Jodry and in lane seven from Halifax Trojans is Etta McClellan. You know, in between teams, I do wonder if the coach has given the same race plan for everybody and yep. just seen who's ex who's executing it to the best yeah, that they want. Right now, again, taking this time to thank our officials, doing doing what they do, really. That is right. You Camera know, Camera work here, all the officiating, timers, referees, stroke and turn judges, lifeguards even. It's really, it takes an army to put up this whole event. That is right. Um, but we could not do it without you guys, so thank you, everyone, taking the time to do it. Thank you to Trojans for hosting this meet. That is um, right. Great complex, great officials again. Their sponsor being Arena, a lot of them are wearing Arena suits, others wearing Speedo, comes out to personal preference, but it is great to see that. But now looking, solidifying her lead, pulling away from the pack, Hayden, is lane three, Eliana McDonald. It's Halifax Trojans, is 16 years old, doing a phenomenal job, seeing people getting up, cheering her on as they get towards the end of the session, knowing that there will be a little break, time to get off her, their legs in order to rest for tonight's session. That is right, she is out fast and strong. Very controlled as well. So, like we said earlier, this 400 free, it's all, it's all, it's all strategy. It is all strategy. And you know, this evening, this is gonna be one of the later events right before relays. So that's right. Again, tonight's session starts at five o'clock. There will be no medal presentation beforehand because all the medals were presented last night for finals. That is right. So we will be jumping right into the meet, um, starting off with. What we started the off 50 with this free? morning, I believe it will be it the 50 free. It was the 50 free. Yep. Followed by... So I'm looking at the session reports right now, Hayden. And tonight for session five finals, we're going women, men, 53, 200 backstroke into the 100 meter breaststroke. Then we're gonna have 10 minutes of open pool after the men's 100 breast, then into the 100 fly, then into the 400 free. Then there will be a five minute break, but then we're going into the 400 medley relay. Wow. So that's where we're going to see all the back breast fly free and the best swimmers from every team will be able to showcase. That is right. Things. But here we go in lane three, Elena from the Halifax Trojans. She is, she's maintaining her lead, but Followed she is. closely by teammate Isabel McBride. That is right. She's being hunting, hunted down by her teammate. Isabel McBride looking to pick up the cadence right now, her tempo, engaging in a little more kick. She's doing a really good job narrowing the gap between her and teammate Eliana from Trojans. Don't count out lane two. Olivia from the Wolffield Tridents, she is putting down the hammer in this third 100. Oh, absolutely. And I think all these girls are looking to get some best times here. That is right. Better their times before going into tonight's session, not knowing there are a lot of swimmers. So I think we will see a finals and the best of the rest heat, Hayden. That is right. I really do hope there's a best of the rest heat for this event. Especially being able to get the double time. If you're just a little bit off in the morning, knowing what to improve tonight, just that small thing. But there is always so much room for improvement, especially in these 400 meter feet. That is right. You can see. A fellow teammate on the sidelines using colored cards to indicate on pace and off pace to lane threes, Elena McDonald from the Halifax Trojans. I have never seen that before. I've I can't never say seen that, that either. And I think Isabel's also looking over that side, but Isabel's swimming her own race and she's looking very strong with 100 meters left to go. But don't forget about lane two's Olivia Williams, as you said, in Wolfville Triton's finest right here, going real fast. Lane five is a close fourth, Alana Mercier from Sackville Waves. That is right. And you know, it's all gonna come down to this last 100. Who can push it more? Who wants it more, Hayden? That's Who right. Who wants that double swim? Alina Mercier, potentially Juliet Mercier's sister, not knowing if breaststroke runs in the blood, but Maybe. she's putting together a very good 400 freestyle here, Hayden. You know, Olivia is really putting down the hammer in this last, this last 100. Oh yeah, and she's looking really good as well. Still looking at the board though, touching the wall first on the opposite end is lane three is Elena from the Halifax Trojans followed by lane four, Isabel McBride, and then lane close close behind lane two, Olivia. She's coming back strong. Isabel McBride really closing the gap between her and Eliana. Teammates, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. They are swimming a great race. Trojans doing a phenomenal job training this distance crew. That is true teaching him how to swim a race in this race plan. I'm really loving the execution here by the swimmers as Huge well. Huge best time from Elena there from the Halifax Trojans. Cutting her time from 5'11.24 to 4'53.79. 
followed just over five minutes from Isabel McBride at five minutes point four two, and then it's coming in lane two, Olivia from the Wolfville Tridents at five oh seven twenty four. Fourth, Anna Mercier from Sackville Waves, followed closely in lane six by Olivia Jodry of Crusaders. Then lane one, don't forget about her from Cornerbrook, Natalie Parsons, throwing down a huge best time. All of these girls, really. Here, Best Adam times McClellan, all around. 12 years old, youngest one in the heat, still keeping up with all the older girls. That is super impressive there. You know, I can't say I could swim 400 meters at 12 years old. No, this was definitely would be one of the hardest races I would have ever swum. That and right. I would not have finished as strong as Ella right there. Etta, excuse me. So here we are folks, they just dove in, heat 6 of 400 meter freestyle, in lane 1, Luke Ellis of Crusaders, in lane 2, Aiden Carroll from St. John's Legends, in lane 3, Luke McLean from Pictou County Mariners, in lane 4, Benjamin Phillips from Sackville Waves, in lane 5, Alex Johnson Humble of Crusaders, in lane 6, Jackson Rowe from St. John's Legends, and in lane 7, rounding out the heat is Henry Pearson from St. John's as well, 12 years old. Wow, just looking at Jackson's uh, short course time, 4.08.65, that is a really fast time at 15 yeah, years old that is one wicked time he's coming and for you Hayden he's coming wow, for you wow he is and he is out 29.98 right here in front of the pack so it'll be very interesting to see what he can throw down for his conversion time hoping to be under or around that 420 mark yeah I think you're right on he's looking super super calm very long arms definitely that is right build lanky he has definitely the reach Calm, controlled, breathing every two as well. Good beat kick. But don't forget about lane two. Aiden Carroll, also from St. John's. Doing a great job. Just looking at the Eastern's cut here. He will be hunting down that 420. Sorry, beg my pardon. That 424.62. And I, you know what? I think he's got that in the bag. I sure hope so. Being a 408 short course, not knowing how great his walls are, I think that should be able to convert to around a 417, 418. Here. Yeah, he should be right around that mark. Yeah, and if not this morning again, maybe he's got some crazy ritual he does in between sessions. Whether it's taking a nap, just loosening up, watching some TV. I know my go-to normally in between meets, if I wasn't able to sleep, I'd often just put some SpongeBob on the TV and yeah. just Yeah, my, my, uh, my coach, she always used to tell us, any rest is good rest. Yep. So whether you fall asleep, whether you're just laying there, whether you're just watching TV, it's very important that you get as much rest as possible. It doesn't necessarily have to be shut eye, but here we go. This is Jackson from St. John's Legend flipping at a 2.14.18. So we're going to see him probably pick it up in this second half of the race, which it, by the looks of it, that's what he's doing right now. Yep. Swim Nova Scotia would love to thank our partners, Nova Scotia, Swimming Canada, Gaming Support for Sport, Team Aquatic Supplies Limited, Active High Tech, and True Sport lives here. So thank you to all our sponsors putting yes, on this Yes, thank team, you very much. Standing by our side through all these hard times and really letting these swimmers have a great time, throwing down some monstrous times, they, being they along really our are. side and helping put this meet on. So thank you to all our sponsors. Jackson really swimming fast here, flipping at the opposite end at 248.18. So we're going to see if he can probably even split, even split this uh, 400. That would be something. That would be. And it does look like he has picked it up ever so slightly. His stroke is still so smooth. Oh, yeah. He's looking really good. Replicating some of the strokes that you see the pro athletes swim. Yeah. Staying long, strong, breathing every two. Looking very, wow. very good. He's got quite the technique, technique here. Sorry. But here we go. Flipping out of 323.01. So he's really going to have to push that last 100 if he wants to be under 424. Yeah, that'd 62. be a 101, maybe 101. One double O even Hayden. Yeah, that so is I right. I don't know if he has it in him because coming back a one double O long course wow. would be quite the task. But it would be. Again, never say never. You really don't That's, know. That is true. We have definitely seen some incredible things this weekend, so you can't count anybody out. Holding on in lane two is Aiden Carroll of St. John's Legends, and don't forget about Crusaders, Alex Johnson Humble in lane five. There are quite a lot of people. There are quite a lot of people in this event so it's going to be very interesting to see the uh, finals list for tonight 
see who's punching tickets, see who just missed out. Yeah. Because these times are all really quick here. Punching their tickets to finals, and even at finals, who's punching their tickets to some national meets? Exactly. Going to Easterns, wow. being held at Point Clair this year. Or if you're going to trials in BC, Victoria, don't forget about junior seniors that are being held at the Olympic Stadium. Jackson is looking very smooth. Touching the wall at a 428-46. Wow. Holy smokes. What a time that was. Great swim there, Jackson. Having a great, he looked great like swim, great execution. Looking cool, calm, controlled. Doesn't even look that tired right here. He doesn't. So I think he has some left in the tank this night. He tonight. definitely does. We'll be surprised. But his teammate coming in in lane two. Aiden Carroll touching the wall at a 445-92. And then followed by lane five, Alex Johnson Humble from the Crusaders touching the wall at a 452-56. These are some fast swimming. Yeah, so all this stuff you really like to see, Hayden. And again, it doesn't have to be that fast in the morning. As long as you're able to squeak into finals, I'm happy. That is right. And it is so important that you don't, you don't go that much easier in prelims. So you just miss out on that final mark because that, that is not a good feeling. And I know, I know for certain that, I mean, I've done that in my career. Oh yeah, I definitely thought sometimes that a little too safe trying to squeak my way into finals and then either you're in a swim off or you're number one reserve and that's, that's right you in the butt. But it does. But here we go. This is the fourth heat of women's. In lane one from St. John's Legends at 14 years old, Sarah Power. In lane two from St. John's as well, Claire French. In lane three from Bluefins, Ellie Stafford. In lane four from Halifax Trojans, Maya Johnson. In lane five from Bluefins is Rachel Slaney. In lane seven from St. John's Legends, Bridget Dunn. And in lane eight, also from St. John's, excuse me, is Elizabeth McKay. It's pretty even going into this first 50. Oh yeah. This is another great heat. I love seeing these heats where they're close. Yeah. Um, really, it doesn't have to be anything too, too spectacular to start off. You don't want to be breaking world records at the 50. You want to be breaking it's world records at the 400. That is true. It is not first to the 50. It's first to the 400. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, it really does come down to who can hold on best. Who's going to execute the race plan to a T and who's going to fall off? It does look like the St. John's legend swimmers in lane 7 and 8, Bridget and Elizabeth, are both pushing each other. Yeah, looking at each other for pacing. Probably teammates as well back home in St. John's. Putting together a great front end of this, front end of this 400. Yeah, first 100 out of 110, 112s. These are some fast, these are some fast hundreds. Yeah, but don't forget about lanes one, two, and four. Doing really good across the pool. Sarah, Claire, and Maya. Sarah and Claire both being from St. John's. Clara from or sorry, excuse me, Maya from Trojans. And again, like we said, this St. John's middle distance distance team, they're really something. Yeah, their coaches definitely got some tricks up their sleeves because these mid-distance times, pacing, ways of attacking these races don't just happen overnight. So these are being that drills right. that are being repeated during practice. Um, so hats off to those coaches and training staff at St. John's Legends. You guys are doing something right. That is right, and I think it's very important at a young age to be swimming some longer distances even though some coaches may not may not think that's right and focusing on specific strokes i think it's very important to be diverse and swimming and swimming anything you possibly can really swimming all events getting a taste for everything so you can really live up to your full expectation in the swimming absolutely getting that full potential but here in lane seven really really showing us that she knows what she's doing is bridget from st john's legend bridget dunn Flipping the wall halfway at a 225.84, so really strong in this first 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 200. Yeah, first half of the race doing a great job, but don't forget about the St. John. Don't forget about the legends up in lane ones and two, Hayden. Yeah, I mean, can Maya from the Halifax Trojans can Catch she up. pull this back? Yeah, it really will be something. It would be. But like we said, this is only the third third 100 out of four so this you know it's always a race yeah it really really is and you know after this there's three heats left there's going to be one more heat of men's than two women heats um but then after this folks 
5 p.m. tonight. Tune in. Come join us in person at Dowplex. Parking is available. There is a designated entrance and masks are required in the Dowplex. That is right. And if you are unable to join us in person, be sure to tune in at 5 p.m. Atlantic time to the live stream. But here we go, Bridget Dunn still holding on to her lead, followed by her teammate in lane two, and also her teammate in lane one. Claire and Sarah. Wow, St. John's Legends taking one, two, three, and four. Can they hold on to this? Can Bridget Dunn be under that five minute mark? Yep, that would Claire be something. Claire wants it. Look at Claire in lane two, making a move right now. She the white does. Line come from her kick. Pull tempo's picking up. Everything's really kicking in. She looks like she's treating this as, as 100 free right now, Hayden. She does, and you know, that's, the, that's probably the most important thing in this last 100. You really want to, you really want to make sure that in this last hundred, you, you know it's all in your head. You got to pretend that it you're is. diving in for that hundred free. You probably can't feel your toes, can't feel your arms, nope. but in the end, no one can. So who's no, gonna, exactly. Who's gonna do their most and really focus mentally. And here we go. It's pretty much, pretty much level. It looks like maybe. Bridget just has the slightest lead, but I'm not sure. Claire. It's going to be close. I really don't know. Oh, it looks like Claire's taking over right wow. here. Claire putting together a monstrous second half of this Can race. Can she break Maybe that five-minute mark? Probably. I would not doubt that. And they're both going to break that five-minute mark. Wow. Fantastic swimming from those girls, Bridget and Claire. One, two, three. Coming in fourth, Maya Johnson of Halifax Trojans. What a swim from those girls. Top time being lane two, Claire from the St. John's Legend at 4.57.76, followed by her teammate at a 4.58.99, Bridget Dunn. Congratulations. So again, converting those short course times, those are right on pace, maybe even faster. That is right. Long and short, which is, again, something to, something to really celebrate. This is the last heat of men's 400 free. In lane three from Mount Pearl Marlins, Gavin Baggs. In lane four from St. John's Legends, Matthew Earl. And in lane five from Shearwater, Bluefins, we have Eric Schillinger. Out very strong, very quickly is Matthew from the St. John's Legend again. That's St. Yeah. John's team. Really, I'm really telling doing you. something with these younger kids. Matthew Earl, only being 12 years old, probably hasn't had all that much exposure no. to 400 meter freestyle, but hey, Matthew putting together a great race, get used to it, buddy. Yeah. This is going to be one heck of a career that you're going to have in the 400 freestyle. That is right. There's a lot of different strategies for this 400 freestyle. Oh, personally, absolutely. personally, I'm a favor of going out strong for that first 100 and then staying in the race for the 200. But then that third 100, that's where you really put down the hammer and yeah, Give it your all, because everyone's going to be hurting. Matthew Earl doing just that, taking it out a little easy. I think he might be following your race plan, Hayden, or I think you might be impressed, because he's looking very controlled right now. He breathing is. Breathing every two, breathing to the left, having a good kick, and not forgetting about those legs. That is right, and you really just want to get into a rhythm for that first 200. Yeah. And he's doing just that as he flips up the 100-meter mark in first place, followed closely by lane three, Mount Pearl Marlins, Gavin Baggs, and Eric Schillinger of Shearwater Bluefins in lane five. We've seen some amazing swimming this morning. Yeah, I am I super excited for tonight. I cannot wait for tonight. Seeing those medal presentations, people know. I want, I want some hardware to bring home. That's right. I mean, it's something coming all the way from St. John's, Newfoundland, Cape yep. Breton. Yep, Truro. Some, some further places, Yarmouth. Yeah, so wow. So you're really having people here, and you're going up against some university students even. That's those right. Those heats and those open heats going up against Dalhousie swimmers, you Ottawa swimmers even, coming home to swim for their home clubs like Craig Bush. That is right. Um, so it's going to be very exciting to see. Doing a great job. Seems to me as though Matthew Earl's got one cheerleader on the side pacing up and down the pool with them. Yeah, that is right. I like that. Giving him the two hands up. 
yeah, pick up the pace just a little bit, Matthew. Yeah, doing good. No, no index cards there for times, but who knows? Maybe they have their own signals with these double hands. Maybe. It yeah. looks like it because he, he looks like he's picking up the pace yeah. in this third 100. Now Matthew breathing towards his coach. Maybe the coach will give him signals. But his buddy on the other side still walking up the pool with him. Yeah, you can see that coach. She's saying pick it up. She's giving a Deuces. peace sign. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There he goes. Matthew is picking it up now. I'm sure. I mean, he is executing this race plan to a T, it looks yeah. like it. Eric Schillinger still hanging on a second, just a little in front of Gavin Bag to the Mount Pro Marlins. You're not much of a 400 freestyler, are you? Oh, no. Gosh, <laughs> when I see 400 repetitions on the board, it is not my favorite day. But you know what I do when I see those? I slap on a pull boy and I do pull. That is right. You are quite the strong puller. As a breaststroker, you need that pulling. Yeah, and uh, there was a time... In point, actually, a couple of weeks ago when I was injured, I was just doing straight breaststroke pull. So that was definitely helped my breaststroke training, trying to push that uh, limit of pain. That and now right. I knew how to do that. So that was really, really nice. I mean, it was not nice during the time, but just being able to, to push that threshold just a little higher really helped me in the long run. That is right. And here, Matthew is still pushing the pace, flipping at a two. Sorry, beg my pardon. 347.82. So he's hoping to be under that five minute mark. That would be something. Yep. Coming back in a 113, 112 high. That's what it'll do it for him. That but looks doable. Yeah. And if not, gosh, give him a full heat where everyone's ramped up tonight, fired up about the final swims. That is true. He will minutes. be. He is he is gonna make that a final for that twelve year twelve. Yeah. Thirteen and under. Yeah, thirteen and under boys for a final tonight. Finals again starting at 5 p.m. So in between sessions, make sure you grab some good lunch, get some good rest, hydrate. Uh, Maybe watch up. your race over. You yeah. know, that's that's definitely a strategy for some. Yep, some pro swimmers, before even hitting the warm down pool, they'll watch their race so they know what to focus on in that warm down pool. That is right. In order to get that muscle memory. But here, in having no warm down pool, you can just put it on, watch it while you roll out, watch it while you stretch. And Matthew's going to be right on that five-minute mark. It's going to be incredible to see him. Last 15 meters here. Can he Can he pull something out of the bag? Maybe not this morning. Maybe even tonight. Yeah, Coach Wanning still yelling at him. He's going to be meters. just over that mark. But 5.01.98. What a time from Matthew. Great swim, Huge Matthew. best time. I believe that. that's probably his lifetime best time long yeah, course. I would say... Write that PB down, peanut butter, personal best, whatever you want to call it. That, that is, is a right. great time. No dairy, no dairy Queen here. No, no DQs. Straight PBs in this heat. This is a great heat for Matthew. Great heat all around for Gavin as well, and for Eric in lane six. Or excuse these me, short, Eric in lane five. These short course conversions times, like we said, this 400 long course, it is something. Yeah, it really is. Not an easy swim, Hayden. It is not definitely not. Eric swim. touching the wall at 540.01. And Gavin touching the wall at 544.71. So those are all right on. Gavin even getting better in his short course. Yeah, time. so congratulations to them. And right now, this is the fifth heat of women. And they are off. In lane one from Halifax Trojans, Marnie Bishop. In lane two from St. John's Legends at 11 years old, Kaylee Simmons. In lane three from St. John's Legends, Annabelle Penton. In lane four, Maria McDougall of Halifax Trojans, also from the Trojans in lane five, Yale Bloom. In lane six from St. John's Legends, Amelia Young. In lane seven from Churro Centurions at 12 years old, Piper Hickox. Also from Churros in lane eight, Audrey Parker. It'll be interesting to see if anybody can punch their ticket to the final here as they all have short course times. Yeah, so it's really going to be really inter interesting Excuse me, to see how these girls adapt to the long course pool and see, this is a pretty young heat, but we're getting, we're getting down there, Hayden. That is true. Maria is definitely pushing the pace in this first hundred. Followed by lane six, Amelia Young from the St. John's Legend again. St. John's Legend. Lane, lane six, Lane three, lane two. Maria McDougall putting on a show right now. That is Coming that in is first right. by a, a, at least two body lengths to the rest of the field. Flipping at a 109.97. She is looking to go well under that.
five minute mark. And I think she's gonna do just that, Hayden. She, I, I do believe so. Going Whatever she had for breakfast, eat that again tonight before five. That is right. It's working. St. John's Legends holding on to second and third, but third being compromised by Yale Bloom from the Halifax Trojans. There was one meet where I had a, the meat of my life, and I ate pasta before every session. Pasta for breakfast. Wow. Pasta for lunch. Pasta for dinner. Carbo you know, load. One of those little things. It's like a little superstition, but that's hey, right. It worked. You know, if you swim fast, you keep the same socks. Yeah. That's what I say. That's what we did during our AUS. We that is right. Had a great meet. And we did. The socks. Yep. They were not, they were not the best smelling socks by the end of the weekend. You know, <laughs> they that's they a were not. You do as a swimmer. That is you wear that's the same right. Socks. Once you have a bad race, scrap you, those socks and get a fresh pair on. That's right. So. Those little things, those little things, everyone's got them. For others, maybe, maybe you hold something that's valuable to you, that's meaningful. Maybe you do the same warm-up yep, every single warm time, regardless of the race. Every swimmer has their own superstitions, and as you, and as you get older, they do, they do become more prominent. Yeah, there's one guy on our team. I think you know who I'm talking about. Liam Ferguson does that some is crazy right. stuff before, the, before his race. That is Slapping right. Slapping himself, touching his face like a certain amount of times. But, you know, it, it works. works. He's, he's out in U-Sport right now in uh, Laval. In Quebec City, throwing down some crazy times, helping the boys 4x200 relay last night go a best time. Really? Yeah, splitting a 155. Holy cow. So, or excuse me, sorry, 154. Holy Noah cow. Noah Muscola Gomes leading off in a 148. Logan Sparks anchoring in a 150. Those Liam are some Ferguson going 154 and Christian Payne in the fourth year went 155. So, you know, Those they're are all fast times. time, but great, yeah. great times. Last day of U Sport is today. Yep. Check out those times on uh, on Splash Me as it's yep. being held in Quebec City, or if you want, just look up U Sports 2022 Swimming Championships. That is Swim right. Swim has a great page where you got the feed. There's a Facebook feed for prelims. There is a CBC feed for finals, and you can tune in there. Also, a link for live results. But tune in as all the best universities across the country are dueling it out right now. Currently in first place for women's is University of Toronto. That is right. Followed by the UBC Thunderbirds. And then first for men's is the UBC Thunderbirds. Is the UBC Thunderbirds. So doing a great job there. So again, for a lot of these girls, not so much these younger ones, but for example, Ella Collins, Emma Hamlin, Sophie Rooney, a lot of them moving on to university sports next year. It's going to be fun to follow their progress as well. That is right. And Maria McDougall, she is out at a 345.00. So this is the last 100 this is the last hundred of that of this 400. So she is looking to go under five minutes, and she's got to go a 115.00 to break that mark. Let's see if she can do it. She is definitely picking up the legs and tempo in her arms ever so slightly, but she's being chased down by lane threes. Lane three. Annabelle Penton from the St. John's Legend, but you know what? Yale Bloom, she's coming back hard and fast. Oh, yeah. As she, Yale, does not go down without a fight, as we've seen this weekend, Hayden. That is correct. She swam the 1500 on that first day, so she does know her fair share of distance. She swims the race wall to wall. She does not stop anywhere in between, and she won't stop until she smashes that yellow touch pad. That is right. And here we go. Maria closing down this 400. She's got 25 meters left to go. These Omega touch pads averaging out the touch by the swimmer and the reaction time of the of the timers as they plunge the final time. That's how you get the time on the board going down to the hundredth of a second. That is right, but here we go. It's gonna come down right to the finish. She's gonna just be over five minutes, but maybe break that barrier tonight. She was a five minutes point oh five minutes point nine seven, sorry, for Maria McDougal in lane four. Followed really closely by Annabelle Penton in the Saint from the St. John's legend at a five ten oh five and closing it down, like we said, Yale Bloom, 12 years old from the Halifax Trojan Club going a 5.13.79. Huge best time, right on those conversion rates, like we said. Great swimming from these girls. Continue to be impressed. They all are exceeding my expectations and honestly, blown away right now as I'm not able to join on deck but have the bird's eye view of the pool. That is right. And here we go. This is the last heat of the prelim session. One more heat of women as there are not enough men to swim this event. So here we go, Madam Referee. In lane 
lane one from Halifax Trojans, Rowan LaPointe. In lane, th oh, excuse me, in lane two from Halifax Trojans, Rowan LaPointe. In lane three from Churro Centurions, Finn Riley. In lane four, Isabel Harvey of St. John's Legends, also from St. John's, is Ariana Higdon in lane five. In lane six, Georgia Breen of St. John's. And in lane seven from Corner Brook Swim Club, Halla Parsons. St. John's putting on a show in this distance, yeah. mid-distance group. I am still speechless about their the amount of swimmers in these races. Yeah, doing a great job. And again, hats off to those coaches at St. John's, um, really putting in some good work at the training schedule. And again, tonight here for fo or excuse me, folks, tonight the schedule will go as follows. They'll start with 50 freestyle, 200 backstroke, 100 breaststroke, then a 10 minute break for the open pool, followed by the 100 meter butterfly, 400 meter freestyle, and then five minute break, and then we're on to the 400 medley relay. Medley relay being two laps of backstroke, two laps of breaststroke, two laps of butterfly. Closing it off, anchoring it is two laps of freestyle. That is right. Hayden, one of my favorite relays. Same here, you know, I do have a great history in the 4x100 uh, medley relay. You do? I do, yes. That breaststroke leg, I used to I used to rip that breaststroke leg. Yeah, you, back used to, you used to have a national record. Back home in Calgary, yeah, 13, 14 age group. Yeah, had that national record for a little bit, but now it's since been shattered. It has been by but the UFC Dinos, I believe. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. They put together some crazy relays. Anyways, here final starting at 5 p.m. Atlantic time, projected end time 7:27. So hey, you still have your whole Saturday evening. That is that is right. Get a nice it. early finish. You can even catch sunset. I think sun goes down now around 7:30 ish, maybe even a little later. I do later. believe so. So hopefully, if we're all on time, we will finish by 7:30. But nothing is guaranteed, as we've seen in previous sessions. There's oftentimes we run behind, but again, it takes an army, and there's always something going wrong, whether it's the board, some timers are not where they need to be. But Rowan is great. Is now taking the she's taking lead. she is. She is taking this race in her hands right now. As you can see, coach on the sideline giving her the let's go. So I believe she is doing her best. Her short course time is 5.04.16, so she's probably looking to be at or around that time. She's flipping at a 2.30.82, so she's going to be right on that time. Yeah, coming in second from St. John's as well. Isabel Harvey in lane four, but don't forget about lane seven's Halla Parsons from CBSC. Still looking great. In a close fourth is Finn Riley in lane three, but lane five, don't forget about Ariana Higdon from St. John's. And in lane six, running out of the heat, is Georgia Breen of St. John's Legends. That is right. You know, it is too bad now in the uh, Easterns at Eastern CJC seniors and even the Olympics. There's no f four by fifty relays anymore. Those no, were exciting. Those were so very exciting because you have all the sprinters. That is right. Rip one lap. True sprinters too. True sprinters. Yeah. Well, that's all they practice. That is short right. Short distance USRPT ultra short course race pace timing. Yeah. Uh, it really comes down to that spin drills, underwaters. You're focused on such small details. No room for error. So there, it really comes down to everyone swimming their best part. That is right. And can Rowan be a 110 or faster so she can be right at that five minute mark? We're gonna find out and see. Coach Matt Bernier encouraging Matt Bernier, Dalhousie swimming alum. That is true. Notable recognition in the 50 freestyle. He was a true sprinter himself, Aiden. He was. I'm sure he loved that 4x50 relay. He was probably swimming when that was still around, so yeah. I'm sure he had Anchoring his fair that, share. I'm sure with Tony Liu. Yeah. Um, doing a great job there, but that 50 freestyle Dalhousie record, Tony Liu still standing. It does. Noah Mescal Gomes, only .04 off last night at U Sports. That is missing true. Missing that record, so it's definitely in, in the future for him. He's eyeing that one because he wants his name engraved on that plaque. He does. And you know, recently this year, Adam Buma. Yeah. Breaking the 100 breaststroke uh, record. record. Yeah, both AUS and team record. Breaking Luke Boudreaux's of Acadia AUS record. That is Adam right. Obama went 101.87, calling him the boom. He really throws it down. He was, and that is exactly what Roan is doing here. She is going to be right on her short course time. So we're going to see great swimming from her, giving some last little encouraging, putting her head down 
She's touching the wall at a 507.25. Coach really happy with that one. I'm sure yeah, she's very proud of that one, too. I would be if I was Rowan's coach. That was a great swim. That was. And I know that she will have some room for improvement again tonight. Maybe yeah. she'll take it a little faster. Maybe. She'll be, with the, she'll be with the pack, maybe even in front of the pack. She you definitely just never had know. some energy left right here. Coming in second, it looks like it's going to be lane four's St. John Legends. Isabel Harvey touching second, but I don't know. Lane seven, Halla Parsons she giving is, her a run for her money. She is. She is really picking up the pace here. Wow, it's going to come down to the touch in the last heat. And the St. John's legend, Isabel, Isabel Harvey, Harvey, just out-touched lane seven. Halla Parsons from the Corner Brook Swim Club. Swim Club. In lane five, touching in fourth is Ariana Higdon. Followed closely in lane three is Finn Riley. Those are some amazing swims this morning. That was a fast prelim session. That was a great prelim session. And as Georgia swims into the wall, I'd like to remind you guys that this is the end of session four in our prelims. And we will love to have you back tonight, session five. Yes. Final starting at 5 p.m. We'll see you then.